call the meeting to order, 6 o'clock. First is to approve the agenda. Any changes to the agenda today? I got something to bring up in other business. Please. Other business? Okay. <laughs> Nothing else? No, I'll say. Seeing none? Make a motion we approve the agenda. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. If you don't speak up, we don't care what you're saying. Okay. Uh, first, it will be public comment or inquiry. Anybody from the public have a comment in regard to something other than what's on the agenda for tonight? When, uh, when will we know when the water is lifted? I believe it's, it's that's lifted, lifted today. I saw it posted. It's been lifted. Okay. Good. Yep. Any other public comments? Yeah, I want to make an appointment probably with you. Okay. Um, I live alone and the water just keeps going up and up and up and so is everybody else if I'm paying the same. Yeah. It's everybody and we have the houses and toilet bowls and everything and it's not right. I'm on fixed income. My, my, that's the only thing that don't go up is my income. Well, I think the select board will talk about that tonight when they talk as water commissioners about the overall well, costs. And stuff. I but certainly, any I questions you have. I drove to buy and it. Yeah. I put on my stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was told when I said that before that I didn't read it. Right. And I think that's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing to pay for what water I use, but I don't want to pay for everybody's hand. And that's about what, what I'm doing right now. I live alone. Yep. It certainly is a. It certainly is a concern for people that live alone and on, um, you know, but at this point, meters are not, are, are not an option at this point, but I think the select board will get into that a little bit more. I think it will be down the road perhaps for Bethel, but not in the immediate well, future. I'm, I'll be 86 and I want to be on that road before it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to help me much. <laughs> what is the status of the robo calling? Um, does everyone in town, or have you uh, contacted everyone in town that they can be on the list so that when there's a boil of water that there is a, a call? The water bills are going to go out uh, this week once the select board as commissioners approves the rate. And what's going to go into that bill is a call link for the consumer confidence report, uh, the rate schedule, as well as for people to sign up for a Vermont alert so that we can create such a database. Mm -hmm. And Kelly also put in the option that if someone didn't have computer access, couldn't go to the library, they could contact her personally and she would have them come into the office and set them up. So it is certainly something that we're working towards, but it does take a little bit of time just to get everybody to buy in. Mm -hmm. um, we've already had started the process, so we thought by reaching out via water bills, especially after a recent, a uh, couple of recent oil water notices, people you know, might jump on the bandwagon a little bit faster. So you'll see that in your bill that will go out by the end of the I've already signed up, so I'm so concerned. But the other thing is, you know, when, when you plan to work on the lines, you might give thought not to do it on a Friday. Because if there was a problem, you have all the kids at home, they're using the water, they may not know. If they're in school, um, my daughter-in-law is a uh, urban planner, and I said that they dug on Friday. And she said, you've got to be kidding. It was unscheduled maintenance. It was a it break. Was it was a break. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, certainly, if it was a, a, a scheduled repair, it would have happened in a, you know, in a better time. But it was a break, so mm -hmm. they didn't, you know, don't have a choice. But we certainly no, understand. Well, we certainly understand your concern, and it's a valid point for sure. It was actually Thursday. <laughs> of day. Yes. Because it was, but it was a break. It, was a it just kind of went over the. Right. But the board. The the water samples were sent out on Friday, Friday so yeah. the boil notice went over the weekend. I think that yeah. was the main concern that people yeah, had. Yeah, it ran on a Saturday, and then, of course, you don't get an electronic notice until the following Monday. We do get a phone call from the lab on Saturday, they will tell you. Right. Um, so we have an unofficial reading on Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't get it officially until Monday. Okay. 
But it was unscheduled and it wasn't Thursday. And by the time we got done for the day, it was too late to grab samples and get them to hand over. So they, they do have a 24 hour hold time, so we were able to grab them and then send both sets the next day. I just wanted to add was, I mean, it, it is unfortunate that we have water breaks, and and I know this board is working working hard towards a solution with the water infrastructure we have. Um, it's a process that's slower than we would like it to go, but we are in that process, and we've been doing um, you know monthly or um, or biweekly type updates with the public. Um, I, I will say that, you know, having been on, on your end of it before with water breaks at my house, that, you know, I, I believe, you know, the water department's doing an excellent job of getting out there and notifying people of, one, that there is a break, and two, the administration's done an excellent job of getting out there, even though we're like, oh, no, here comes the boil notice again, but we're, we're out there knocking on the doors and passing out the information, because I can tell you as a homeowner, you know, 10 years ago when I came to town, and had water breaks almost monthly on the north end of town, I never got notified. I didn't know the water was out until it was out. You know, and these are problems that <clears throat> at that time, it, it wasn't like it broke that day and they're out there fixing it like we're doing now. It was, that thing's been leaking for weeks. Now they finally came out to fix it. So we're not quite where we want to be, but I will say that we're, we're getting a lot better at the reactive end of things um, and making you aware that hey, we can't drink the water. Because I can tell you before that it would be a water break. they come out and fix it, and the whole time I'm drinking the water, I didn't know not <laughs> supposed to, you know, and then all of a sudden you hear, well, you weren't supposed to be drinking the water. Well, I never knew that. So I think on that end of it, we're doing a better job. Um, I so just have one, one question, Patrice. You said um, that the notice is going to go out in the bills, and uh, if people want to get on board, uh, I would think that a boil of water notice is severe enough that they should be requested to submit their phone number. Well, we can't. I mean, we can't require people to do it. We, we will get as many people as we can signed up, but if they don't want to give out their personal information like that, we can't force them into it. You know, they would be notified. Like, this is a matter of their health. Now, and it's, but it's their choice. They also have free will to make so those decisions. Is there a critical number that you are looking for before you can activate it? Because if they're signed up, they should be getting all of those notices. If they're signed up, you should be able to send it out to two people. Yeah, Kelly did do that. She she was she did it today because she asked Mo and I if we got them <coughs> on alert on the water notice. And, but we hadn't, and so then we got busy with, because taxes are due tomorrow, so, but she was gonna call the gentleman that you're working with to do the LEOP at the state level and find out where the disconnect is. But you're right, it can be forced up, whoever has it. And yeah. she did do that, so we're so just the, not sure. the main thing is for you to, you should, you're not gonna be hamstrung by other people not signing up. No, Once not. you get signed up, you should that's, be able to get, good. yeah. But the, um, the way these things work is that you have to, you have to validate it from your end when you sign up, right? So we can't force people but, to sign know, it up. It seems strange to me since this is a matter of health, uh, a person's health. Um, in Mount Pelia, uh, I don't think that there was a request from the people whether they wanted to or not. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I spoke to Jamie, who was the assistant to the town manager, mm -hmm. and she said, we just included it. I don't think there was a do you want to sign up type mm -hmm. of uh, a thing because my sister lives there. Yeah, her sister lives there. And it's not, it's not, you know, I mean. So I just wonder what's, what, what, is, what is your point? The point is um, if we have to boil the water, that means there are germs in the water. And I think that a person should get an, uh, a robo alert on whatever phone they have. Um, being notified because the girls can't run around to everybody with this sort of paper. And but are you gonna, are you really are you gonna to, are you being signed up so that you'll be notified? Uh, I hope I am. Well I'm then, signed up. I'm I, assuming I, that you, you would have done them on your own. I wouldn't know if you'd signed no, up. No, you see that's that's not it. When I spoke to Randy, who was in charge, yeah, of this, right. He said that what you have to do mm -hmm. is set up. Uh, 
a pool. Right, and that's what we're doing. Put the numbers in. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Then you can activate that and robo pool will go out. Right. Um, and there really isn't any any reason to delay. It no, should just I know, be but done. When, when you guys met with Randy, what Randy said was he told us to get together a bunch of information. We send it to him. He creates the database to, to put it in. And I believe that at the time we didn't have very many people signed up, hence why we're doing the push in the water bills this week to try to get more people to do so it. But I know of... Kelly pushed it, and she said she asked Mo and I, and we didn't get it. And then taxes were busy today, so she's going to call Randy to find out why it didn't go. But we are doing that. We are doing that. So but my point is, is that since it's a matter of health, the Board of Health <laughs> would want to have these people notified that there's a boil of water. I will have to ask Randy what the legalities of that are. I, 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 to be honest, uh, uh, James. I can call him tomorrow if you like. But that's, and the other thing is, too, is a lot of times, believe it or not, we actually don't have people's phone numbers. For many, many years, uh, town clerks didn't collect phone numbers because it was public record. So we're doing, we're in the process of that now. We're doing collections as checks come in. We're, we're collecting phone numbers. But as someone who's been doing delinquent collections, there's a lot of numbers we don't have. So we probably couldn't even add, we certainly couldn't add everybody. We probably don't have half. We have less than half of people's numbers. So in the bill that's going in, is it going to be like a red piece of paper or orange piece of yep. paper? Yeah, yeah. And, and just say, and I'm sure that the Board of Health, if I call them tomorrow, <coughs> they say that is ultra important mm -hmm. if there are germs in the water and have that on the red or orange piece of paper yeah. that you really absolutely have to have your yeah. number well, for out. That's, Kelly that's, a, that's the on. issue I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand. What, what does other people's health what, what, is, what is your issue with other people's health? Why, how does that hamstring your access to the information? If somebody else... I don't understand, Carl. I'm just... So we are sending out the information to get people signed up. You understand that. You have the opportunity to sign up. Right. You've provided your information. What business is it of yours that other people in town make their own decision about their access or their risk of health? Because I don't want them to get sick. And, and how does that affect your, your standing with the, with the alert system? Well, as a Christian, I really don't want other people to get sick. Okay, well, we don't either. <clears throat> and that's why we're doing this. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that we can only do what we can do. And as long as we've no, got... No, I'm saying I am in total support of this. In matter of fact, I researched it on my own. Good. Okay? And I got a hold of Randy on my own because I couldn't believe that Kelly and everybody were walking around with these green things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I researched it on my own. Good. But I think I think one thing, you know, that we might be talking, I could be talking a little bit out of turn here, but... Uh, <clears throat> the Vermont alert is different than than like the school's robocalls. So Vermont alert, <clears throat> you have to get signed up because that's a third party organization that puts this together. So you would have to give them permission to contact you if something was to occur. However, you know, sitting here and thinking about it, I mean, <clears throat> there probably is um, an option for us here at the town to, to mirror kind of what the school does and we could have our own robocall system that puts out an alert <laughs> if we need to. But, yeah, the, but, the, 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 the merge, right. but I'm just saying that merge but they're separate. Management is trying to link all of this since they right. have the Everbridge and they have the, the Vermont alert, they're trying to link all of those together so that everybody stays in the same system. Mm -hmm. So which, The nice thing, uh, oh, was just, this was just thinking here while I'm sitting here, but yeah. um, you know, the nice thing if we ever did look at like a, a robocall system for our town mm -hmm. is it could be used for much more than just that. Mm -hmm. You know, you could use it as, you know, you can send your message and send it out and say, don't forget that Friday night there's movie night at the town hall. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that information gets out to people just like the school system. They do more than just schools cancel today. They'll talk about parent-teacher conference that's coming up and everything else. So that maybe that's something that we could look into. Maybe, because you know, you know Owen, right? Is that his name? The principal? Mm -hmm. Maybe you could ask him. I'm just curious how much they pay. Yeah, I don't system. know. Because Vermont Alert certainly is free, so, mm. but it would be interesting to know. 
because uh, you're right. I mean, there are definitely different uses for yeah. things like that. And that but, might get information out there. Plus, we can put other information. But so, so for the town, so for the time being, mm -hmm. the Vermont Alert is where we're going for now. Mm -hmm. And in order to be a part of that list, you have to make sure that you have signed up with them so that they have permission to. Where do we sign up? I'm not signed up. Um, you'll get it. We're going to give you that. You're going to get that mailer. It's coming. Yeah. Okay. So you, you put your, your personal information that you want to be contacted, and that will get out to you. Yeah. And Kelly already worded it, um, Jana, so I can't remember what it said at the time, but she's already worded it and printed them out and <coughs> carved them all up to so put them in the. Um, in the well, but I can't remember what her wording was, but I think she explained about boil water notices, etc., in there to kind of encourage people. But I will have her, we'll talk to Randy to find out about um, mandatory or um, set up. I don't know. Do you have anything, Tim, you want to add, or you're, you're good? The boil water notice is precautionary, it is only assuming that there's bacteria in the water. The way we deal with the leak now is if the volume is slow enough, we will work on it live until the last possible minute, which greatly reduces the chance for cross-contamination as long as you have positive pressure. Mm -hmm. And the water was only out for an hour and 45 minutes last Thursday. That's pretty good compared to how it used to be. And like I said again, it's precautionary. The town does do every recommendation that the state has a law for notifying the public. We meet every one of the standards. The state is incredibly impressed with the office and the staff right now. The Vermont Alert is above and beyond, and so it's going to take time. It's also not mandatory or required, so it's going to take time to get it set up. What is not mandatory or required? It doesn't mean we don't have to do it. You don't have to do Vermont Alert. Alert. It's optional. You don't have to do no. Vermont Alert. No, no but since Vermont but there's, but Alert is there, you might as well use it. And they are trying, and that's yeah. what I'm explaining that you're going to have to have some patience because it's going to take I time. understand that, but I also understand that when we had a break in front of the post office before yep. we came along, yep. um, it had gone on for three days. Yep. And I told the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were very, very, very upset. But things and what they said, okay, is the minute there is a break and water is coming down, okay. that permits bad things to go in. And they are yeah, a little you misspoken. have to put out a boil <coughs> They're a little the misspoken. Yeah. That's, what? That, that's a little misspoken as long as you have positive pressure. Okay, it's, well, I will pull them up too. No, I'm sure. Uh, so I guess for now, just it, for the Vermont Alert, you know, the faster we get your information in, yep. the, the better off it will be to be able to get on that third-party system <coughs> for everybody. And, and we'll, we'll look into mm -hmm. potential robo-call systems and things like and that. Does the, Vermont, <coughs> does the Vermont Alert isolate particular areas? Like, for example, this last break affected from here to here? Yeah. It depends it on whatever information you want to give it. You can create any kind of group. Yeah. Um, you can create a flood hazard zone group for yep. particular outreach, and that's the, mm -hmm. the point is that you can, once you get the information in there, you can sort it however you want based on whatever the information is that you want to send out. Um, and that but comes it, from... It takes a learning curve for the for whoever's going to be... That would come from the town office to Vermont Alert saying... Well, it would come right out of this, right out of this, once, once, right now we're working with Vermont, with the emergency management to create our database. But mm -hmm. once we have a database and training, Kelly should be able to activate whatever kind of grouping right. she needs right. to for whatever kind of an alert Particular she wants to send yep. out. Incident that takes and then that place. alert will go just to that pinpointed area. Yep. And it's a new system to us, certainly, <clears throat> Bethel just trying to figure out, you know, Vermont Alert and, and Everbridge. And so, you know, we're trying to understand the software as well so that we can use it to its fullest <laughs> potential. So mm -hmm. if we're working with Randy, he's coming down, and, and um, so, but I mean, it's an excellent tool. Janice is right; it's an excellent tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just need to master it. Yeah, we'll take one they more, and then we're the outside of the high school. They have a board, and every once in a while, there is something that flashes on about something that's happening in the town. Is there any possibility that we could ask them to flash a look in your water bill? Um, to sign up for town alerts. 
just something as simple as that. People no. drive by, they notice it. It's another way of... Sure, we could ask. Worst thing could say is no. Right? We could always put it out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know... You in Florida. Yeah, I have to ask. <laughs> um, I will... I'm sure that Kelly knows someone at the school. Yeah. 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 You know, another thing, we, this is the last year that we'll have high schoolers. And they, every month they have a, an assembly. Um, kids could be alerted. You know, um, they are really good messengers. And we should use them. So we have used up our public comment period, and we are going to move on, which we're moving on to more water and sewer. <laughs> so, uh, so under our first item for the night is, is the rate setting of the water and sewer. Um, we had started this conversation at our last meeting, um, which was uh, three three weeks or so ago. The, uh, we had proposed, there was a rate sheet that went around which was the current uh, rate schedule versus the proposed rate schedule. Had um, comments on there. Um, rates, if they were changing, of, of why we were changing the rates. Um, and did everybody have a time to look at it and take it in? And, and there's copies on the table, Chris, back there, the budgets as well as the pros and schedules. So again, just kind of overview for, for those that weren't here. Or, um, water, water rate wise, our current EU um, cost is $100.92. The proposed rate increase is to $116.12. Um, this is keeping um, this is keeping the increase at, you know, we, we talked about a couple of years ago of where we, where we need to be and where we were at the time. And rather than taking an awful sharp spike to get to that, um, we chose to do kind of more of a gradual, doesn't seem like gradual, but a little more gradual uh, rate increase to get to um, where we need to be to offset the cost of what it costs us to produce water and bring water to, to the households. Um, and as we, as we know, you know, water and sewer, you know, has been, has um, in the past, uh, has been one of the drawbacks on our, our budgets here at the town um, with um, either on the collection ends of things or not being run efficiently. Good thing is right now we're, we're running the most efficiently that we've been in years. The, um, so the EU proposed rate is going to increase um, about just over $15 a quarter. The, the other thing that we had looked into is the current rate for, um, for the metered accounts, which I believe is only four or five, um, after they use their EU. So every EU has a certain amount of water that's, that's allotted for usage. And once they, once they go over that allotted amount, they have to buy water at a certain rate. So the, the current rates was 90 cents for a thousand gallons of water. Well, where 90 cents ever came from, we're not really quite sure. But we do know that 90 cents does not cover the cost of the water that goes to the house. So what the we have, what's that? The business. Or business, right, in this case, the business. Meters. So, um, so we've increased that for the metered accounts to three dollars and fifty nine cents per thousand gallons. So that is going to offset the cost that it costs us. Because right now, what we were doing is any of those metered accounts, if they went above their usage and they were buying more water for every thousand gallons they were buying, we were losing money. Well, we as taxpayers, taking we're all, money we're all, out of the other account. Yeah. So. The, the other thing that we've also um, have gone through and looked at was the Bethel Water Ordinance and, and looked at the vacancy um, end of things of the ordinance. Our ordinance that we have in the town of Bethel states, has not been followed, but states that the, the vacancy rate should at least cover the fixed costs. Um, and the fixed costs 
of the town represents 68.96% of, of the overall cost. So 68.96% of the EU amount. So there, there has been for many years, sorry, it's bright, but um, there has been for many years, well, not as long as I've been here, $25 was the vacancy rate. So um, at the households, what we found out is $80.08 is really the actual cost. Um, per you. And follows the water ordinance that the town has. So the other proposal was to increase the vacancy rate from $25 to eighty dollars and eight cents. The for other this year. Correct. for this year. For correct. This, year. this is a these are rates the way that we're calculating it now that will be recalculated every year based on right. the mm -hmm. same right. kind of a formula. Yes. At at the same time there's also um, rules that would be followed um, that would be in accordance with our water ordinance that would be followed with if, if you choose to put your account on a vacancy rate, then there's procedures to follow from there. So there's, there's the dis, you know, disconnecting or reconnecting of the water. Chris, yep. do you find that everybody is honest about if they have a tenant or, you know, or if they have re-rented their apartment after they're on a vacancy rate? Well, there I, hasn't been enough incentive in yeah. the past for it to be that way. I, I really couldn't tell you. Um, well, I know, but I, I won't name the name, but I happen to know of a person who took her apartment off and then rented it and then forgot to tell you guys. Mm -hmm. and, and that very well could happen, and I don't know, you know, any accounts myself. But what this, what this fee structure does do is, for instance, if someone before took their account off and put it on a vacancy rate, uh, one, we weren't covering our costs for, for the transportation of the water to the residents. Just because you're not using it doesn't mean it doesn't cost money to get it there. Um, so now, you know, so before your cost structure was $100, right? $100 a quarter to have an EU worth of water. Um, however, if you took your account off and put it on vacancy, you paid $25, right? Now, let's say you did, you weren't honest and you decided to do that and you still were using water because we never went around and shut your water off. So what, what the system, the way it's supposed to be run, is the vacancy rate should, be, should cover the fixed cost of the system. So that is the delivery portion of the system. And you only get vacancy after your water's been shut off. Right. So in this case, your vacancy rate would cover the fixed cost for the system, even though you're not drawing water from the system, but it covers all the I transportation. Have, I have. Five people living in my building, and according to Therese, my my bill that will go out for five people for the quarter will be seven hundred and ninety-one dollars and fifty-seven cents for the quarter. That now includes that, sewer. What? That includes sewer, I think. Right? Sewer and water. Yeah. But seven hundred. I gotta yeah. say it again. Seven hundred and ninety-one dollars. And 57 cents for five people, one of them being 95 years old. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. Well, it has nothing to do with the people, it has to do with the system. Right. It's, these are, this is the actual you cost. Know, you know, I really think, I, I think that I respect what you're saying about, you know, the vacancy rate, pi r squared, stand in your left foot and month with an R. Why don't you just take an eraser? and just start from scratch because we just that's did what that's what that's what we, we just, just did. did yeah so what we so what we well hold on i could probably handle a little bit of this so so what we've done is what what we have done and what we're doing right now is we're getting we're getting a handle on what is our true cost in the town of bethel to provide this service i can tell you that we did we had no idea how much it was costing to provide the service in the past and you can clearly, by some of these pricing that we had, you can clearly see that it wasn't, that's why we got in, you know, part of our issues that we have in this town is because we don't know how much it costs us to do business on something. And we were charging rates that weren't at least Covering costs. keeping us even, Stephen. I will say that 
our rates, even with the proposed rate increase, are still lower than a majority of the towns in Vermont. The lower than Rochester? Okay, no. so we picked the one town in Vermont. Okay, gotcha. but I will say if you look to our, if you look to our, our <laughs> friends of the north, if you look at just water alone, it's $250 a quarter, not alone adding your sewer, which their sewer rates are more expensive. You know, my father lives in Windsor, Vermont, and he pays over $400 a quarter for water and sewer. So I, I understand that it is, for people that have a fixed income, it, it, it is a lot to bear. Wouldn't it be better if you had meters? So the no. people that are using, no. no. The people that are using more water are gonna be paying for what they're using, and I won't have to pay for more than I'm not using. No, you actually will have to You'd pay. You'd have to pay You'd more. have to pay the vacancy rate. You would actually have to pay. Why the, a vacancy rate when I'm living there? Well, I'm there. It's, it's the vacancy rate is the base cost for the system. It's 68% of the cost of the system is just to keep water. So you will only get metered for water that for the cost that's above that 68%. Okay, so so you're gonna you're you're re basically it's it's a lot of arguments. So in your nothing. so well here we can do this one quickly. So if we were to take your house, okay, and I don't know, so hold on. One bathroom. Okay, so if we so if we were to take yours, right, the fixed cost of the system would be um, eighty dollars. Okay, so you would have you would be charged eighty dollars, and then Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but how much is uh, how much is one meter to buy? Uh, well, it's going to be about four hundred thousand divided into that's a drop in four hundred. Really? Yes. No, how about just one, if, if one person went out and bought a meter, well, how much? Get to $1, okay. It's probably going to be $300. Okay. For a smaller. So you have $300, is that installed, or is that just a unit? Or? Oh, it's just in the mail. Okay, yeah. but, so you have to, you have to buy the unit, you have to buy the unit, you have to install the unit, you have to maintenance the unit. In the long run, though, I'm going to save money because I'm not, yeah, because I'm not going to be paying for all this water that I'm not using that everybody That's, is paying the same price. You're just assuming. You're just assuming that you're paying more because of the of the rate that we have. I am paying more because people with four or five kids and grown-ups in the house are paying the same as I am. I am paying more. Tell me I'm not. But what you what we're trying what we're trying to explain is that you're not paying for water. You're paying for you're hitching up to the water system. We are not charging for water. We're charging for infrastructure. And, and Which that's is falling and, apart. Yeah. What's that? Which is falling apart. In fact, the infrastructure is so bad it's on its deathbed. So that isn't the point. We're talking about cost. And if you want to improve infrastructure, four hundred thousand dollars spent on water meters will not improve the in I infrastructure. I will buy my own water meter. I will install it that's myself. What I said. Right. I, I don't yeah. see. I don't know why you couldn't do that, no. but it isn't going to save you any money. No. But well, I didn't save you any money when I sued you about it. No, actually, we all paid for that. Yes, you did. Because yeah, so, you should have so I, I will. I, I well, hold on. How so, much? How much? Is, yeah. With the I'm way the EU money, system. Right now, one person is paying how much? Can you tell me what one hundred dollars and ninety? How much? One hundred dollars and ninety. Oh, I paid more than that. One hundred dollars and ninety-two cents is just water. If you're, yeah, but if I mean the whole thing. You also get sewer. Yes. Okay, that's an additional one seventy-five ninety-seven. Okay, so I actually, um, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm paying now. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, what am I going to be paying when you get done adding all this other stuff to it? What yeah. you're going to be paying is an additional It'll be, fifteen dollars. It's almost, almost three hundred dollars now. Yeah, you'll right. be paying additional. I believe about fifteen dollars. So the the same thing holds true. We're not charging on the number of people who are actually in the house, we're charging based on the potential usage of water and sewage within the house. It should be the number of bathrooms in your home and the number of people. Right. What happened to that? Well, it's, it's that. It's not how many are in it. It's the capacity in that house. These are, these are basic... I don't know the home. That's my capacity in that house. Just well, a, so what I'm so trying to say is that, that you're not... You're not, it's, it's apples and oranges. You're trying to say that you're using sewer or you're using water, and that's 
not what we're charging on. We're charging on a system basis. We have to break, and in fact, this is not a new idea. In 1949, when the town took over the private water systems, that's exactly what they did then. It was a rental fee. You did not pay for water. You paid to rent the water system. And, that, and that's exactly what we're doing now. These are rental fees. These are not how much water you use or how much sewer you make. And, and it's, it's confusing, but it's the fact of the matter. And what is the $3.59 three, three, uh, three per thousand gallons of meter? That's water. Those, that's that's above and beyond. With our, with our commercial uh, um, accounts, they use way more water because of the commercial need for their water. So they have meters. And they, have a, they still have a base amount of water that they have brought to their facility because they own a, or they're renting a, a connection fee. But when they use more than that thousand dollars, then we charge them by the gallon. Wait, wait excuse me. <coughs> you're, not, you're not telling me that a home with, say, seven kids and two grown-ups in that, and they're paying the same as I am for water yeah, and so else. Yeah, and Bethel Mills has is, is got what? They're paying what? Maybe half more than I am now. That is a fair thing to. I'm not saying it's fair, and we've already. Right. And, and in fact, in it, fact, yep. Yeah, but the court fair. case already showed that it doesn't have to be fair. What we're using. Oh, 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 okay. Um, unfortunately, that's the truth. It's right. is that, the system stinks. Fine. I'm not disagreeing with that. Then what? What are we? This people that get one check a month supposed to do when that one check a month goes for lights, food, water, and sport? I know. I don't. I I, I, I share your concern. I share. I share your concern, but that. On that. Right. And, and what do we do now? But your your fixed income, unfortunately, it does not stay. I mean, it does not go up. No. Everything else. Oh, what I'm trying to say is that. Are going up and everything. And then what do you do when our taxes are late? Because us people that are on one income can't pay them. You add more to it by adding interest to it. I'm sorry. We're not making these fees based on your one income. No, I know you're not. And that's what's. It's not helping us people that are on one income. But the, we need help. The, Yes, we know that, and that's two different conversations. If we can find a way to help you, we would be open to that, but, but the issue that we're trying to find now is, to, is a way to be uh, financially responsible about a, an infrastructure system, and unfortunately, it costs more than you can afford. And that, that is, well, so, but we can't actually change that unless... A, there's some way that we can get a benefactor or somebody who's willing to pay for accounts that are having a hard time paying for it, but it doesn't change the cost of our system. So just, just a couple of things, um, you know, so just separating two articles here, you know, so tonight we're talking about the cost of the water system and the proposed rates based on those costs. We are on a, we're, we're not, we weren't going to talk about it tonight, but, you know, we are in the process of the water inventory for the town, uh, which we're, we were, we're greater than 40% uh, of the way through that. We will also be looking at other methods or potential methods of payment for the water service. We are, we're all open to whatever is in the best interest of the majority of the town, because that's the way the democracy works, the majority. So we are going to look at the majority of the town residents and owners of businesses, and we are going to make what we believe is the best decision uh, or most efficient, cost-worthy um, decision for everybody. Now, I can tell you, a couple of years ago when I first got on the board, we had briefly looked at water meters, okay? And contrary to belief, the water meters was gonna increase everybody's water uh, bills drastically. Not, we're not talking, you know, $15. Like it was gonna, I mean, everybody's is gonna go up 100 bucks. So we chose not to do that. Actually, we just chose to not even hear it. We just pushed it aside because it was wasting our time. But we will, um, Teresa's been working with Michigan, we, uh, North Carolina. Carolina, sorry. Um, and we 
So, so yeah, and we did tear the rate apart. Yeah. We started from scratch. We that's how we came up with the numbers. Yeah. And and while I agree that meters are, you know, perhaps the future of Bethel, at this time you have so many infrastructure issues um, that my recommendation had been to Greg was that when we get finally get the final stuff from Aldrich and Elliott with the probable cost of engineering and construction, looking at the possibility of starting by putting meters on anyone with apartments and commercial properties and starting, and starting there. But we have to kind of look at the costs and, and don't forget that while we're discussing this, uh, you know, when you have a water meter, there's sometimes times there's a dual rate. So there's the base rate that it costs for the system, and then there's a secondary rate on top of that to cover any debt. Because this 68.96%, this vacancy rate, is not covering the entire cost of the system. So, so it will be, um, you know, once you add meters and another bond payment and things to that, coming up and, and you know Rome wasn't built in a day and unfortunately you're in a system that's over 50% depreciated and no one had the foresight to set aside money. No. So we're working through that and we're trying to work. I totally understand where you're coming from. He's talking about taking the majority of the people in Bethel. To me the majority of people in Bethel get a, get a check every week. Mm -hmm. uh, we really have to look don't, at the meeting. Don't, in we don't get a check every week. You've got to look at that. Well, Ooh, I mean, other than the majority of people in Bethel. The, the other thing we have to we have to understand is I know that here in Bethel that we've taken our rate increases have gone up um, quite a bit here in the last couple of years. But we also have to understand if you move to almost any other town in Vermont, you are instantly going to pay way more. And I know Rochester is a little bit lower than us, but. The, they're an anomaly. I understand so, everything you're saying. So we're right. trying our hardest to make sure that it's but cost worthy for everybody. Barbara, Barbara pays one equivalent unit. Yep. I pay two point seven one equivalent units for five people. Yeah. Okay. Two point seven one. Bethel Mills only pays one and a half equivalent units. They have thirty five employees. They wash down the grounds. They wash down the trucks. They have. People coming in the public and using the facilities, it is not right when so you say, and they do not have meters. Number? They do not have meters. Does, does Bethel Mills truck? I don't know what the graph says. They, um, they, do they have a meter, Bethel Mills? No. no. Do they pay one and a half equivalent units? I believe that yes. that's correct right now. That's you said 1.5 yeah. Yeah. or 2.5, but however, no, so it's they, based no on they don't have three. It was they one. don't have three accounts. No, no, one, no. one of the, the two of the accounts. One is over here, right? Okay, and another one is an apartment that they rent. Right, That's exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, and I said but that. Bethel Mills itself has one and a half. Trust me, I have researched this. Yeah, trust me. Yeah. one and a half equivalent units, and Barbara pays one. And now that's that is unfair. That's immoral. But we have, well, we, we actually have a, we have a, a, <laughs> a survey that they that's respond to. Well, and we, I'm not sure if we've got their results back, and um, so that is something that uh, I was going to mention to Greg when he came back because we did do, as Paul knows, did uh, the water test from over there. So we're certainly looking at how many bathrooms. And so we just sent the survey out. And I'm not sure we have all the it, results. It doesn't, you know, when you have 35 employees and the public using the facilities and you're washing down trucks and you're doing this and that and the other thing, I don't care what set of numbers you use. What? One and a half equivalent units is not right when Barbara pays one. What so, I'm saying but is the, but value we have to have now. some consistency across the system. No, Carl, no, no. Your consistency is entirely wrong. That is wrong for Barbara to pay one equivalent unit. So do you want to have a logical a do you want to have a logical conversation in here? Yes, I would like okay. a logical conversation. So and then what I want to know is why Bethel Mills I'm gonna, does not I want, have a water meter. I want so to, wait, hold on. So, so the question that we have surveys that we send out to all of our accounts, please don't interrupt me. So that when they respond, we have criteria that they respond to. And the fact that they wash trucks and that they have 35 employees may not affect that survey the way that you think that it should. And I'm not saying that it's right or it's wrong, but we have consistency so that every single, please stop, every single commercial account has the same response 
the ability to respond to the survey. And, and we calculate based on that. But at the end of the day, we, what, you know. Just one thing, then, and then I'm finished. Please hit the nail on the head. Your criteria is wrong. That is the crux of the entire matter to this entire town on how the sewer and water is regulated. And we the don't disagree. We don't disagree with you at all. We don't disagree with you at all. You have to do we have been for the last six months. Water. Greg has been going over the criteria for both the water right. and the sewer for those of surveys. Yeah. I mean, you're barking up a tree that's already full. So, to, to let you, we are working on it. We really are. Okay, and you know, kind of the whole situation. If if Bethel Mills ends up paying two and a half units, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's accounts going way down you know it just means that you're gonna pay the same amount that you're paying now they're just gonna pay a little more um, so we are going to be looking at that and but and they would be paying so, their fair share that way well, I don't know what their fair share is but the, we well, will figure that out but, but so what right now what we have to worry about is how much what we have in front of us tonight is we are looking at what it actually costs the town of Bethel to produce water to everybody's households and businesses. This is something that in the past was not done correctly. I mean, clearly, as we see, a vacancy rate is $25. It should have been at least $80 to cover the fixed cost of the system, okay? So we're trying to move to a fair system, right? So everybody's got fair system. Also, on the metered accounts themselves, they are going to pay more water, more money, and they're or actually they're going to pay what it costs the town of Bethel. Before, for every thousand gallons they were taking, we were losing two dollars and seventy cents, right? Two dollars and seventy cents. So and this went on for years, right. and years and years. Well, that was years, and all we can do is we are in the present and we're moving to the future. Okay. So all I can tell you is that right now with the water, just to kind of go over it so we can get back on track. Um, the proposed EU unit, the EU unit price is going to go up uh, just over $15 a quarter. 15 okay. Just over 15 yeah. yep. Um, the, you want that to my budget? I know. <laughs> $15. I know. So $15, 15 I know. So $15 a quarter, so $5 a month is what we're charging everybody more. The, the metered accounts... Uh, per 1,000 gallons is going to be going from 90 cents to three dollars and 59 cents, and then the vacancy rate, where we are going to put the vacancy rate at what it should be based upon the Bethel's water ordinance that we have. So for years, that should have been something that was very easy, right? Our, our ordinance, if you look it up, says if you have a vacancy rate, which we do, it needs to be cover your fixed costs, and 25 dollars does not cover the fixed costs. What this also does is, like, like girls have pointed out, if someone does try to fiddle around the system, they're already paying their fair share, so why would they even, because now we're going to say, if you want the vacancy rate, we're going to come out and shut your water off, and that's going to cost $25 to shut your water off. And then you go on vacancy rate, right? And then when you want your water turned back on, you're going to have to pay $25. We're going to come out and turn your water back on. And there will be no water going to that residence for a vacancy during vacancy. Rate, you're going to come and check the water off. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. You realize you have very few curb stops in this. Case. We are going to work. That's that's another issue that I'm sure you're well aware of that we are, and and we will work through that whole thing too, right, Tim? So. I have no issues putting one in. So we we understand that there are going to be times that there are probably some water shutoffs that either are there and we don't know where they're at or need new ones or whatever, and we're prepared to do that. And now while you're looking for all of these that aren't there that should be there, who pays for all of that work that they have to do to find them all? I, that, I'm doing that work right now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. but you get a good pay too. Right? But that all comes yeah. under the cost yeah. of the fix. Yeah. Whether I'm doing paperwork or I'm searching for something. But, but, so, I mean, it is frustrating. It is. But, yes. but, the, but the problem, does not rest right here. This is 50 years of poor management on this system, and we actually have our hands tied too. So we cannot perform our duty for the town people of this of the water system if we don't take these these moves. And and it isn't it isn't easy for us to to swallow it either. But I mean, 
And this is one of the reasons why it's never been presented to the townspeople before is because nobody wanted to have this conversation with people who were paying the rates. It's easier to say this and then create a line of credit and keep that rolling for 15 years than it is to actually address the cost of the system and charge people what it actually costs. And you're probably paying more now than if, than if somebody had 35 years ago started taking the bull by the horns, we'd have a completely different financial structure than we do right now. And it's unfortunate, and I'm not trying to dismiss your concerns. Gross negligence and gross income. We're not disagreeing with you, but we're, our hands are tied. We're not able to change that for you. Are the taxes going to be going up again this year? Yeah, yeah, taxes yeah. and water. See, as I said, and so is gasoline. I got a budget. So is food. I got to add all this extra into that budget. And you know what's going to happen to my budget? There's not going to be enough in my budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's no. what happens when I can't pay my taxes. You're going to add interest to it, which is going to cost me more. No. I mean, where's the help for us people that are on a fixed income that their income doesn't well, go up? Anymore? There are there are organizations so, that. For taxes, uh, the best case well, is your is your I do like, I will say yeah. that I do get the twenty five hundred dollars homestead. Yeah, and, 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 and but that still. Well, you, you know, last you, year that didn't. It, the first few years of this year, after Dick passed away, it paid them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't pay them anymore. All of it anymore. I still end up with paying taxes. I think that you would qualify for both the renter rebate for your lot rent I as did, well as your HS twenty one for the state rebate. Did that, but it's still last year. It didn't cover it. Yeah, I, I had. I still got a bill from them from County of the Iowa, and then. Yeah. All right. And so just to they clarify, too, the slug thing that was, that was funny too. Now this is just a gripe that I have. I they got the check from the state for my taxes, and then they sent me a bill, and I, I had to pay, I think, $268 extra every quarter. And the first quarter came up, and instead of considering the money they'd already got from the state, they told me if I didn't pay them on time, they were gonna add interest to that payment. Now, come on. Oh. They had all that money from the state already taken out of that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I, I was gonna say that the select board is not the one who sets the interest you vote on that at town meeting. Um, just, I just didn't want them oh, to take I the, 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 the hearing for that, too. So I just want to make sure that we stay on track. Yeah. I, I would tell you that this board is, we, like Carl said, we completely understand all the concerns. And we have the same exact concerns that you do. And that's why we have taken extra time out of our lives to be on this board to try to get things the way they should be. So hopefully, years down the road that we are in a better position in the town and we're more efficient and more cost effective on <clears throat> utilities, taxes, everything. So we really are working hard on that. I so, actually truly believe that, Chris, for the first time in a long time. Well, I thank you. I believe that. And, and, and like Carl was saying, this is, in years past, when I was on the board and when I sat in the audience and watched board meetings too, is, you know, I, I've never, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I never remember any really debate about water, sewer. I mean, it used to be just tonight we're signing off on water and sewer, they got passed around and that was the end of it. What we wanted to do is we want, we're, as people are, you know, can attest to, or Lisa can attest to, she's here at all the meetings, is we're very transparent on this board. So there's no hiding anything. You know, we're all an equal uh, partner in this whole, you know, day-to-day -day operations of this town, regardless if you're a resident or a select board member or administrator, we all have the same, you know, stake in this town. So all we're trying to do is make sure that we want everybody to understand, um, understand and also own the responsibilities as well. So <coughs> right now what we want to make sure is everybody understands how much it costs us in this town. But it, it used to be the number of people in the home and the number of bathrooms yeah. If well, now they but, but look at it. They're not considering that at all. Well, why do you think? A lot of things that we used to do has put us in the position we're in today, right? So I'm not even saying, but maybe well, the way we used to do it is the reason why we're here today. I don't know, but we're, we're working through this. So I think what I'd like to do before we move on to the sewers, do we want to take a vote on the proposed rates on water 
then move to sewer? Or would we you like to, to hear the whole thing first? We need to adopt the amendment to the sewer ordinance, right? If you're going to, yeah. And I, is that, does that not require a public hearing? To the, amend a, an ordinance? To, to amend the ordinance. No, what you have to do is you have to, you, you have the uh, meeting which you're having now, and then you, uh, it's not effective for 60 days because people have the right to vote, to, you know, to rescind. To petition, a petition for a public exactly, hearing. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's and, only and the amendment to the, the amendment to the system includes the amendment to the system clarifies the basis and the vacancy rate. Right, because the, the and the, then we can adopt the rates. Right, because what you had done in the past was the vacancy rate for was only yeah. called out in the water ordinance, not sewer. And what you had discussed at your prior meeting when you asked me to draft it was that you were considering saying that the what, that the vacancy rate would only be available to residents, that it would not be available to commercial and so to users because you felt that they had the, the ability to rent an apartment or increase their rent. So um, that's why it would end up being an amendment to the ordinance because you had to get the change. So. so do we want to stick with, do we want to finish the water portion of it before we move on to talk about yeah, the Yeah, but there's a water ordinance right. as well. Right. Right. Amen. One more question. Yeah, do you have any vacancy rate? I have uh, three units in my building. If I had a vacancy rate and I didn't pay it or I didn't inform you, what would you do? Come and check the curb stop off of the you won't, school you school? won't. You don't qualify for vacancy rate if you don't rent an apartment. You, you have to shut off the water to the entire building. Otherwise, you rent the apartment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you pay the base rate for the water that, that, okay. that you're hooking up. And, and one other thing that you said, then you can increase the rents. In this area, there's just a point at which you hit, which you can't increase the rents any higher mm -hmm. because the people cannot pay it. So I, I was just restating something that they said that one, someone had mentioned last time. I was just restating yeah, a prior yeah, comment. But I, just, mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear also. Yeah. So, so I think the first thing to do is to we address those amendments to the ordinances, right? And then we can ac accept the, the rates. Because the rates basically are also um, amendments to the water system or the... Yeah, or, the, well, the rates you actually yeah. don't have to do, it's not, not technically an amendment because it says in your ordinance that you will annually change so the rates. So it's an attachment so, A. Right, right, so the rates right. don't have to be, but the amendment has to. And um, if it's adopted, it will be effective July 5th. So that's, like I said, I mean, you could change the vacancy rate and leave it under the current circumstances. Or, but since you had talked about more specifically changing it and requesting me to draft it, then that's why you have. <laughs> so the so the amendments that we're. The amendment that we'll be voting on will be the the language surrounding um, vacancy and putting an account into timeout. If you right. um, so, we would so it's just making the amendment of the wordage of where the water is shut off or turned on, and regardless mm -hmm. of would be the amendment. Right. Well, well, also the second set, paragraph. In you know, section 19, vacancy rate was we were defining vacancy rate because right. vacancy rate was vaguely it wasn't defined in the definitions in your ordinance. Mm -hmm. So that's why I put that under Article One amended. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. So that's the amendment. So there's so it's Article One is where you can see where I did the vacancy rate. You had to define it. Okay. And then I put a line in here so you could see what your current ordinance said as to what it would be changed. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll clarify the definition of vacancy yeah. rate um, yeah. for and the town of Bethel as a vacancy rate means the quarterly charge of at least the fixed cost of water service rendered as set annually by the water commissioners. Right. And then under... And under section fees. three... You, I try to put the changes in... in um, I tell. Yeah. Yeah. And then under, under section three, we'll be striking from the current language uh, with water is shut off or turned on and regardless of. 
Right. And then the whole second paragraph is in charge of. If the owner of any property would like to request the vacancy rate of their property, they must submit the request in writing to the town office, town manager's office, outlining why they are making the request and for how long they would like the rate to be in effect. If approved, the town manager's office will contact the owner to set up a time to shut off the owner's water at the curb stop. The vacancy rate will apply to the single family residences only and water shall be shut off by the town at the curb stop. Commercial rental properties not fully occupied are ineligible for vacancy rate. And so. Lindley's right, the, the first paragraph too after that, Chris, it says a charge of at oh. least the fixed cost of services. Okay, I didn't see that one. You know, yep. That was also yeah. a piece of it too. <clears throat> uh, like I said, I was yeah. just trying to capture what you had stated at the prior meeting. So should we do a, do we need mm -hmm. to do, um, so we'll do one, one vote for the amendment and then yeah. one to, for the proposed yep. sure. okay. right. So I would entertain a motion um, to accept the um, Bethel Town uh, definition of vacancy rate um, as we just discussed as well as the um, under section three um, adding the paragraph um, that specifies in regards to um, single family residences and the commercial and rental properties um, definition of, of shut off. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then second, uh, I'll go over quickly again. The proposed water rate schedule is $116.12 per EU per quarter. The vacancy rate um, with this new proposal is $80.08. Price per thousand gallons is $3.59. The disconnection fee and reconnection fees would be $25 each. Um, again, um, interest on delinquent accounts will be assessed according to statute. Which is uh, currently the 1%. Yep. And then the next part is what I'm asking. And penalties on delinquent accounts will be assessed at a rate of 5% of the delinquent amount. So that's a request that I had, that I had brought up before is, you know, you have such, you've had such chronic delinquencies that there's, yeah, 1% interest, but there's no penalty. And by the time you issue the water bills, and they're not paid within 30 days, you issue another water bill, there's another 30 days, and then you issue uh, two-page notice, so that's another 15 days, and then you physically go out and start tagging doors and then shutting them off. So you're not even covering the cost of what it even begins to cost you for collections or even for people that go far that, down the process. So um, my recommendation, and you can change it however you want, I can draw a line through it, is that you charge a uh, 5% uh, 5% um, a rate of 5% on whatever is delinquent. Um, Past 30 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know some people do a flat rate. So where I came from, it was a flat rate. If you were late, it was nine bucks. And, um, so, but it, you know. So the clarity is that the first line, interest on delinquent accounts will be assessed according, that means that what you're saying there is there's statute that enables us to assess yep. interest. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that there's a statutory amount of interest that's charged. Right. right. That's usually the same vote that okay. you make at town. So then, right. Yeah. And then the second, what you're asking about is that we actually create a penalty on a de on delinquent accounts mm -hmm. that will be assessed at a rate of five percent of that delinquent amount, mm -hmm. right. and it's per a different statute that allows yes. towns the authority to create penalties on accounts. Okay. So one was about interest, the other is, so would this be on top of the 1% interest? No, it would just be, it would be the-, the Instead 1%. of 1%, it would be a 5%. No, it would be 6%. They'd yeah. be charged 1% for interest and 5%, but the 5% would be charged on the base amount, not on the interest, the base plus interest, then the 5%. Oh, I see, all right. But, you know, that's a recommendation just because I see, I mean, I'm obviously I'm doing the collections and it, by the time you're 
handling all the papers and stuff in the envelopes and buying the envelopes and the paper and it's unfair to people have who you are got an idea current. what kind of cost what what those rates look like in other communities uh, I, I know we charge people nine dollars it was a flat rate we charge nine I've seen people do eight percent which is the, the nine dollars is not a percentage that was no, flat flat each time right? how do you, but I've seen people do you know how that nine dollars would be almost ten That'd be eight percent, almost yeah. seven or eight percent, basically. Right. Um, exactly. be less Depending on what mm -hmm. the charge was for the water, and some people use eight percent, just like you do taxes. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe you start at three percent or five percent. But I mean, a percentage is more equitable across the. You know. Yeah, because if people have paid some of the bill and then they're just being charged up on a portion of what's left, but you have so many delinquencies, right. um, obviously, of working on it, and um, but. By the time you, you know, if someone is continuously every quarter getting three bills or we're tagging their door or anything, it's, you know, it's, it's a burden to the people who are paying their bills yeah. on time. It's a balancing act to the point where you don't want to charge them so much that you dig the hole so fast that they can't climb out of it. Exactly. Versus, but you, at the same time, we can't chase okay. that kind of money and lose money no, chasing and a lot of times, too, you know, if people are just late or it's the first time they're late, you know, well, you can waive the penalty. I mean, we've done that for people. We mm -hmm. can, you know, at least where I come from, we'll say, all right, you know what, Mr. Russell, you were, you know, you're late, you know, you pay the interest, we'll waive the penalty this time. Yeah. And I think that there's, you know, ways to deal with it, but when you have a constant... Yeah, month know, after month. Yeah. Opinion, I'm not sure so, another piece of clarity before, uh, in here it says price per thousand gallons is $3.59. Do we mean price per thousand gallons above the allotted amount or is it a thousand is it three dollars and fifty nine cents across the system is that what it costs us to move That's a thousand what it costs us per thousand gallons to produce last year right. based on the budget so it's not a, so that's an accurate statement for that this is very yeah mm -hmm. that's and it matches your race sun is like yeah first of all <laughs> yeah so i'm yeah. not sure so that's just my recommendation, and you can scratch that or not. I mean, obviously it's it's tough because the rates are going up, and I realize that. But like I said, it's also unfair to the people who do pay their bills on a regular basis. That. So I mean, I, I agree. I mean, there should be there sh should be some sort of um, incentive to pay your bill on time, or yeah. you know, make sure that you do. Um, you know, the five percent. I guess my opinion would be is the five percent probably could be a little light. Um, but it, depending on, you know, it'll incentivize the people that want to hold on to their water bills longer. Mm -hmm. um, where if we just did a flat fee, if you really only own, let's say, $10, and now we hit you with another $9 fee, mm -hmm. you know, that's, a, that's a, a very large increase. So, I mean, I would say 5% seems pretty reasonable based upon... So, uh, Therese, how much does that 5% transfer based on what's Well, if it's 5% of $116, you know, if you looked at... Per person, it's five dollars and change. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think the other thing that people need to remember is that even though our administration is getting salaries, this is an enterprise. These both are enterprise funds, Absolutely. and so they actually, any time that the administration is dedicated to these administration of these accounts, the, these systems should be paying for them. Right. Yeah. And, and exactly, and plus right. too, you have just the materials and the time and the postage and you know all that. And then if you're, you know, if Tim's going out and act, hanging a shot notice on a door, I mean, there's a whole you know process to it. I think we need to turn the lights on. <laughs> can we just the sun's going can down? We just well, I don't the <laughs> so, Where's the switch? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a couple of switches. All right. Well, we just <laughs> the start. Where are they? are they up here? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. Is that where they're at? Are they up on yeah, the Yeah, there's some right behind that wall, and there's actually some down there. I see it's, um... Mo needed to get up. We just went from, went from blinding from the light to it just got really dark in here. So. Thank you. All right, well, um, I'd make a motion that we uh, adopt our attachment A to the water operation system Spelling out the rates as Chris just um, expressed, including the addition of a penalty on delinquent accounts of five percent. I'll second that. Second. 
All in favor, Mo? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Aye. 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 All right, so we'll send that around, sign that last piece. And water has been taken care of for the night. Um, and next up, we have sewer. The sewer, the sewer portion of it, um, the changes to the sewer are less than water. Um, the proposed uh, sewer rates are, are to stay the same um, for this coming year at $175.97. So there won't be any increase to the sewer um, equivalency unit. Um, however, just like with water, um, the the vacancy rate um, for sewer in this case is $120.70 um, to cover the fixed costs of the system. And up from, up, from up from $50. As well as the uh, gallons used per meter to count, uh, which currently was at $2.18 per thousand gallons metered would increase to $11.06 per 1,000 gallons metered. Again, this is putting ourselves in line with the cost of the system. Um, so again, any accounts that we currently had that went over the allotted usage, it was costing the town of Bethel about $9 per 1,000 gallons um, for that. So the last numbers that we had on that were not that high. And, and no, they so weren't. the calculations were based on. And my calculation was wrong. As I said that night, I didn't think my calculation right. was right. I think so they were Tim seven or eight dollars. Yeah, it was six or six something and some change. And, and Tim and I met the next day and I, and I was basing it off um, the wrong number in a grid. So it was so it was obviously my error, but I had said that that night. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it went to the so 1106. That, yeah. It's okay. And um, you know, Tim and I did do the calculation, and Greg again too on sewer. Um, you know, and, and while we still stand by the 175.97, there was room to increase. But between water taxes and everything else, and you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Tim is here. You know, I think that you've had a really good steward of your sewer system for the last 30 plus years, and he's really done a great job keeping it maintained. And and you know, I don't think that it's, it's certainly no not anywhere near what the water system looks like as far as its need because he's been such a good steward of it. So I think it's certainly part of the reason that the rate doesn't have to go sky high. But we do need to adjust work. the vacancy rate and the oh, price for the per thousand just so that it's more. So it could bring it in line because we well, know we so it's all valid. Yeah. 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 And, so um, and we cost. certainly had shown you that we've done the math. <laughs> so. um, well, I think the, the big problem before is nobody was actually basing it off of production. <laughs> Which you, really, that's what it should be based on, both water and sewer. So once you apply those principles, it becomes a very easy formula to figure out. Right. And it's valid, it's verifiable, it's, right back to the customer. You can yeah. do it six ways to Sunday and it still comes out with the same numbers. And it also has room to change as the community grows or if the, the EUs change. Um, it's just a matter of simple inputs into the formula and then it's you know, you put your budget in and it's duck soup. So also with the, um, also with the vacancy rate change and the price per 1,000 gallons, we, um, to put your account on vacancy rate with sewer would be the same um, as a disconnection fee and then if, when you want to come off it, a reconnection fee. So um, it'd be the same setup as with water. So we have, uh, let's see. So just for future, if you underline the new word, the new wording, because okay. at least in my, in my oh. printing here, it's hardly yeah. noticeable the oh, difference okay, between. Sure. Uh, so it looks like on this one, we got to um, make an amendment here with the wordage that, um, once connected to the wastewater system, the owner is obligated to pay at least the fixed cost of such service, regardless of whether the property is occupied. And the next sentence, too. And the next one. Yeah. A charge of at least the fixed cost of the service, 
is to be known as the vacancy rate. Okay. And so then that entire following paragraph. So it's the same as Which water. is the same paragraph. Yeah, as water. Mm -hmm. So um, first I'll, I would entertain a motion to accept the, um, again, the definition of the uh, vacancy rate for a sewer um, as we just spelled out, as well as um, the parties that are parties that are able to take advantage of this, which would be residential only um, and commercial and rental properties would not. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Okay. And then second would would to um, approve the rates of sewer for the um, for the next year at $175.97 per EU per quarter, a vacancy rate of $120.70, a price per 1,000 gallons at $11.06, um, also a reconnection and disconnection fees of $25 each. Um, again, um, the, the town um, is able to um, assess uh, the 1% interest as statute and we would also be um, adding a 5% penalty to delinquency accounts. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So um, there is a potential of between the vacancy rate and the new prices per thousand gallons for both water and sewer that um, we might generate more fees into the system than have been in the past. Mm -hmm. And we took that into consideration in the budget. No, I realize that, but that in turn talks to the issues of, of increasing rates is that uh, some of the system rates, like with water, we had to bring that in line with reality, but the sewer rate is basically unchanged in this in this set. It's the vacancy rate and the price per thousand gallons is substantially more, and theoretically, um, that could be beneficial to the entire system. Certainly, yeah, so that the commercial properties are paying more their fair share than, mm -hmm. than getting, you know, a, a break at two dollars and eighteen cents when in fact they should be paying the eleven oh six. So all right. The other part of this item was the consumer confidence report. Everybody just, get a copy of that? Just letting people know that it's out and that it's on the website and that it will also be notified in the water bills that go out tomorrow that there's a link for it so that people can see it and also mm -hmm. states on there. If you don't have access to a computer, you want us to mail you a copy or stop by the office and get a copy. It lets you know how the consumer confidence report, uh, where it's available, um, and that will also be in the water bills that go out, or water store bills that go out this week. So it will, it'll list, um, Again, it's a report that's generated annually. Um, it'll go over all the uh, detected contaminants um, amounts. Um, it will talk about um, any violations that the um, the owner has incurred, which the town of Bethel had one violation, which stemmed to um, it was a failure to monitor, which was from. Uh, from the period of January to March of last year. Um, the, uh, the public notice, uh, some, uh, there was some deficiencies that were noted. Um, there was a monthly reporting that was inadequate. Um, and then there was the inadequate water pressure this was from March of March of 2016. Yep. Other and than that, I didn't see anything. This entire I, report is going to go in the water bills, or just the link to just the just link, link to, to it. That's the requirement. Mm. And, the, and, and so, the recommendation that people come get it if they want to. Yeah, it. or they can call us and mail it to them and sign on the website, and we'll certainly make it available to people as they want it. 
Yep. So the failure to sample was during the previous administration before that was handed over to us. Um, the failure to report, I think, is somewhat tied directly to that too. And then the low pressure issue is something we're not going to be able to escape because it's due to the elevations of the reservoirs and the elevations of the service lines. And we're, we're working with AD to try to figure it out, whether it's a booster pump in that end or not. Okay. Um, but it's because we have gravity feed systems and we have our feed reservoirs feed are just yeah. barely above the cherry lane. And yeah, and it is somewhat affected. We do have a leak that we've somewhat located up in that area that actually may be affecting some of that pressure, but it's still not going to save us. And the rules are for testing that are pretty difficult because you have to maintain, I think it's 500 gallons coming out of the fire hydrant downstream and still maintain that pressure at your highest elevation, and that's what's killing us. Um, part of it is the diameter of the line, so it doesn't allow the water to transfer fast enough for it to stay fluid and filled up to pressure. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some issues up in the Christian Hill area yeah. with the pressures. Um, yeah, I mean, th that, that, those water lines must be they, almost... They are really close. Well, you know, 2.31 feet of elevation one pound of pressure, right. so it takes a lot of feet to, you know, we'd have to raise that reservoir another 70 feet to, to meet the minimum standard. And Tim, that'll be all, that'll all be identified inside the water inventory well, that we, we actually, have currently. Yeah, a and &E just completed their hydraulic flow uh, model that they can do with a computer and it still showed that. We just met with the state uh, yep. two Fridays ago and they're very happy with where we're headed. Um, but they understand that we have some issues we got to work through, but they're not pushing us because they realize we're trying. Yep. Oh, good. They, they were all but high five with us during the meeting. It was a great meeting. They're very impressed with that one. So as far as water and sewer goes, um, you um, will probably get checked back in here shortly in regards to the next step. And I know we were at 40% of inventory. We're probably 50 or... Uh, it's all, it's, it's, yes, it's driven by A and E yeah. basically. And I think we were talking by fall to have that completed. Yeah, I think right? it is. Okay. Yeah. So by fall, around fall time, we should have the inventory back, and then we can start looking at. Uh, well, the inventory. Well, will we like have the comments done by fall too? I think the agents the. I don't remember the schedule. The state and everything yeah. like that. Because it won't be just, I mean, it's going to be the inventory, but it's also mm -hmm. going to be, if I understand correctly, that it's also oh. going to be a, the, what Proposal. they're prioritizing yeah. about what it, we can do, what the cost is, and that yeah. way we yeah. can look at whether yeah. the state of Vermont, USDA, what sort of forgiveness. Sometimes you can get <clears> some <throat> loan forgiveness or better rates from the USDA, RD, depending on median income in your town and different things that drive those factors. Yeah. We actually did make out pretty good the, with the tank inspection. They've passed that for the Boulevard Reservoir, so all we're going to have to do is some rehab work. And the initial quote that came in was $36,000, which is significant compared to $750,000, $800,000 for a new reservoir. Mm -hmm. um, but that's one of the first steps that's come along yep. so far. So maybe we can, let's see. Maybe at some point in June, I'll, I'll talk to Greg at some point in June, one of our two meetings in June, we can follow up on seeing how we're coming with that. There's a calendar schedule and I don't have that information right off hand. Okay. I'll touch base with Greg when he comes back and we'll, well see we in June if we can have an update yeah. there. That was from the, the, the a &E proposal. Yeah. All right. It's in our packets. Uh, moving on. That was a long uh, item. We'll uh, move on to number two for the night, which there is a, an abatement request, 40 Miller Drive. Yeah, so I did put that together. So obviously this property on 40 Miller Drive doesn't have, hasn't had water, hasn't been using water since Irene. Certainly it was a business that was devastated during Irene and has since then been bringing in water um, and going home uh, to get water or use facilities. And um, you certainly have under uh, Article 3, Section 2, you have, um, unless and until proper notice is given to the municipality of termination of service as of a specific date. So, you know, looking back and speaking to this gentleman and, and going through the, the finances and 
how much, how long he actually paid through, even though he wasn't using the water. Uh, as I stated, I'm not generally a uh, an advocate for terminating service, but in this case, it, it it just seems like the logical move. It's not being utilized, and and um, we've explored the options there with him, and it just seems like the right thing to do. Yeah, it wasn't like there wasn't. It was a. Yeah, it was some completely out of their control. I mean, Irene obviously devastated a lot of people, and yep. mm -hmm. and, uh, and certainly was a situation of this property. And so we're abating a value of 769.2 in rental and mm -hmm. 208 in interest. Yes. Presumably on that, that was a bill, the rental bill was charged in error. Well, and the then the interest rate was charged on that bill. Yeah, they kept... Not so much in error, but no, in right. miscommunication. Without, mm -hmm. without any communication between the user and the town. If the town, I think, had reached out and understood what the... I think they would have terminated the service right. a lot sooner. Um, but there was just no outreach between. And I certainly made an apology on behalf of the town that no one had contacted them in all these years to try to work it out or talk them through yep. it. Tim went for a visit, and, and so it was a really good way to facilitate... You know, it seems like the, the correction that needs to be made there. Yep. Um, well, I'd make a motion that we grant the abatement. Um. I just wanted to, I was just trying to think about how we had one three weeks ago that we had talked about, um, and it completely slipped my mind now on, I remember that we ended up not abating it. That was a big concern. Yeah, that was a vacancy yeah. one that had, you know, so he had been saying, vacant, but hadn't saying, yeah. reported it and wanted retroactive vacancy rate. Mm -hmm. So I think that was why we did was the onus was on. So in this case, yeah. the water service is destroyed by Irene. Yeah, and then and, and the facility. The, yeah, yeah, and they haven't been using it, and, and uh, so it, it just they paid until they no longer could, even though they weren't using it, they were paying for it, and so. You know, it's a possibility that once, if the business ever grains ground, it could be turned back on and, and, and all that. But at this point, that doesn't look likely. And it's just a real added burden. So this is more of a case that we, we did know that... No. We, oh, know, we didn't know because no one reached out from the town yeah. to this. You know, that's part of doing collections is you start talking to people to find out what the, what the deal is, how you can make an arrangement for payment. And, and once I had a conversation or... Gotcha, I did. I, Tim went first to figure it out and then came back and then the gentleman and I had a conversation. We were able to figure out exactly how long this had been going on and, and why and, and everything. So it, it makes sense to, to do the abatement. It's, they have not been using the water at all. Well, they paid for a number and they of paid years for a number of years it. that they weren't even using it. So I'm not even going all the way back. I'm just going back to just bring the bill to zero. I second Carol's motion. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. The uh, Delta Dental Insurance. I didn't see anything in the packet. No, I just wanted to let you know that we okay. were um, that Bethel. While your health insurance is January to January, your dental is July to June. Runs like the fiscal year. So um, there's just a 3% increase, which is what we budgeted for, so that's good news. Is okay. We actually budget for this increase, and it's open enrollment now for people to make changes. Katie put that information <clears throat> out this week in payroll, so if anyone has anyone to come off and go on, they'll do it. But I thought it was good news that we actually hit, we, we budgeted 3%. That's just, we'll take that as a win. So that's all I just wanted to okay. do. I just got but there's the nothing we have to act on then, just no, informational. We we got the rates. Perfect. All right, and then our next item is the Capital Highway Fund, um, which we're looking at uh, purchasing some equipment. And um, so Therese can fill us in a little bit, but basically we had, um, at town meeting day, we had, with the budget that we had voted in, was to, um, was to add a position here at the town um, this person would um, would be filling in and kind of some different capacities, either um, doing. Just, we're creating an 
a position. Position. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. To address costs and activities that have already been undertaken, either by staff hire. that's being brought yeah. or by contract hires. So, yeah. Right. Right. We're not. So there were some of the necessarily creating right. position. Right. But what we did is we took some of the hired services that we had been doing. So, like for instance, some of the. Um, um, the mowing, uh, mowing um, some of the um, snow hired snow removal, and we're making bringing that in house to be more efficient with it. Um, so along with that, there's some equipment that that we need to purchase um, to make that happen. So that was where we're at tonight, where which is looking at um, the purchase of a one-ton pickup. Yep, and the, um, also looking at a utility trailer uh, to make sure that the truck has a V-plow and that there's a sander. So that, yeah, so a lot of things that you were contracting for in the current budget that was passed at town meeting, you could see that there were reductions in that because we were taking the money from what we would have paid to have someone plow um, and, and using that to offset the salary and, and benefit piece to kind of bring it back in-house, or to bring it in-house, maybe, I don't know, whatever it was. Um, but you also said you were, there was some issues with the highway equipment fund, and I didn't see any attack, anything in the packet to show how those monies have been you get, um, So there was a, um, mm -hmm. it was in my packet, um, yeah. it it was like the this, uh, um, highway capital improvement summary. So basically what, um, I just updated the number, oh, right? right? It's similar yeah. to what we put into the town report and just kind of looked at that the uh, vehicle generally would be able to last seven to eight years and putting it on a replacement schedule, uh, pulling apart. And uh, looks like in Bethel's history, you, you have bought uh, two vehicles at once and still trying to break those apart so that they're not purchased two at a time so that you'll do them. And, and hopefully with obviously with proper maintenance that they should be able to last to a seven plus year of rotation. It also was a conversation about pushing out the grader a little bit, um, obviously, and, and updating that price. I felt that price was pretty low. And uh, so Greg was looking at that to kind of look at industry standards to see and whether or not you will actually buy a brand new grader or a used grader with the hours. I don't know, that's a decision for somebody else to make. But so basically within the confines of this uh, capital improvement program summary, uh, you can make this purchase if the funds are available to make this purchase um, of for up to, I think the motion would be <clears throat> for up to $30,000 to make the motion to purchase uh, the vehicle and this added equipment. 30 for the vehicle and then another 1500 for the trailer. <laughs> yeah. 43000 excuse yeah. me, I read the wrong number. Yeah, so the motion would be to, you know, maybe not to exceed a 43000 and I think that uh, you were also given um, in the packet, along with Greg's memo, was contracts of you know state bid prices for the similar vehicles of different makes. And Mo can answer any questions at all that you have. Let's be grilling Mo tonight. Mm. <laughs> so he does, knows. So does this price include all the other miscellaneous items that go along with this? Like the forty-three thousand, yes. Yeah. Like. Communications that have to have radio put in it. Probably um, not. <coughs> no, this is for trucks. <coughs> this is just for that because you're probably going to have to have chains. The tires are they going to be adequate for? Those are, are probably be part of the general budget. Probably a general. Because yep. yep. we did add six thousand dollars to the budget last year for that was approved in March for tires, so that tires are now its own line item. Yeah. So there was and yeah, so that Just as far as some, communication, you know, you're right, the additional insurance costs, the additional yeah, that's fuel certainly costs. not included here. That would have yeah. to be picked up as cost in the budget. All in the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that those aren't truly a capital expense anyway, so you'd have a hard time right. paying. The auditors would yank that right out of there. So, the back of so the part of part of what I was getting at is that the that the funds for this have been pulled out of our capital mm -hmm. expenditure funds by the maneuvering of the other mm -hmm. expenditures, right. mm -hmm. making it no more substantially costly moving forward to to make this new cost. We, we still have to come up with the money. Mm -hmm. But we're pulling some of that money from money that we were dedicating to uh, purchasing other vehicles at different rates of time. 
and you can see here under the 1718 where he put it in and he put in the um, the amount to purchase a, a vehicle so he put in forty five thousand dollars um, which I think his memo says 43 but he put 45 in here to cover so you can see that the money is there that it's already been appropriated mm -hmm. and, and is there and it also gives you new ending balance and rolls forward to, for future years and it shows no purchases in 18 19 and 19 19 and 20 excuse me with this new position we're almost going to need some mm -hmm. sort of working vehicle for the, for the person because he's going to have to transport stuff he's uh, plow down street here he's going to take care of the uh, the uh, side streets as I understand it and this year we spent a lot of money on on uh, subcontractors for plowing side streets here. Yeah, the, the, um, is this a dually? No. So oh, all right, good. All right. So you're well. I mean the combination of the position is is one to, to be a little more cost effective when it comes to some of the hired services that we've done in the past, which right. you know more specifically would be the, the hired mowing. Um, this also uh, will help us with um, our promise to the downtown business owners on making sure that we can clean the down, down street, um, streets, sidewalks, and things like that in a more timely manner. Uh, the idea here is, you know, as we're <coughs> focusing on these major storm um, and maintenancing of the roads for that, is the, that crew can continue to do what they're doing while this person can start cleaning up, you know, the parking lot and get, get the downtown cleaned up um, faster um, than waiting a day or two later to do it. Um, so it's going to be a combination of um, some of its in efficiencies. Um, by bringing it in-house, and some of it is by um, um, kind of our uh, promise to the downtown to, to have the downtown looking like it's open for business sooner um, after events, as well as uh, a little bit, from what I understand, doing the roadside mowing, but also doing more of the downtown-ish things in the summertime with right. mowing and Parks. weed whacking and you know things that we've seen you know in the past couple of years where some of these areas out here have you know grass this high um so making it look like in the summertime they're hoping for business as well so and it also facilitates that person not having to use their own vehicle when the other vehicles are being used mm -hmm. um, so it allows them because right now we're utilizing the, the employee's vehicle and, in a lot of cases, and uh, it's not a good. We're paying. Uh, it's not a good thing to do. Mileage for. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, I. Uh, my opinions of it is, um, you know, I think Greg did a, a good job at looking at our capital improvement program that we have. I mean, the capital improvement program, in my opinion, is, is a a working living document that, you know, as, as our needs in the town change, then you know, we should be forecasting and changing that through our document. Um, I think it was good that he was able to point out some um, some probably cost saving measures for the town on, you know, maybe not purchasing the the grader for three to four more years um, from when we originally going to do it. However, actually putting in a, uh, a more ac um, accurate number now to go on with the grader. Um, and then spreading out some of the purchases of some of the other trucks that we had in the past wanted to purchase right together. Um, so by doing that, I mean, this is, you know, in my opinion, the, the town manager, we, we hired the town manager um, to do this. And, and um, you know, the taxpayers of the town okayed it on town meeting day to, to go ahead with this. And, and now we need to perform the, give them the tools to do it. And it, it seems to work well number wise it works well in the capital program from looking at it so i guess my my vote would be in favor of it i move that we uh, authorize uh, greg to uh, look into the uh, purchases of this up to i think you believe 45 000. 43 i think he said 43 oh. this memo, he put 45 in the town, in the highway plan, but he requested 43. I will say 45,000. Uh, Mo, could you, out of the capital highway? Out of the, out of the capital. Thank you. I am. So you said 45, Mo? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
We have a second. Yeah, second. Um, all in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Ayes carry it. Should we call him anyway, just to bother us? Yeah. No. <laughs> we'll call him and we'll get the ladies from the audience so you can tell them we heard this truck. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I heard. Yeah, he said he's be a bill. What time Give him it? a tough time for a few minutes. What time is it in Oklahoma? Yeah, it was a two-hour difference. Is it two hours? Yeah, um, yeah. So his daughter was graduating Right in the college. middle of the graduation. Yeah, right. I'm afraid to love that. Right now, graduation. Howard, next. Topic uh, go over the Sullivan and Powers service agreement um, as Therese will go over. Um, you know, our auditing in the town um, was another hurdle. Um, we had, um, uh, as we discussed in other meetings, we we had a period of time where um, the either the audits didn't happen in a manner that they should have, or we didn't have a lot of the office staff to make sure that the audits were, or the information for the audits were ready. So um, over the course of the year, the last couple of years, and I had Therese grab the info for today, uh, we've, we've spent more money auditing in this town than we should be doing um, with, with a um, efficient administration um, that we have in place now. So before, um, the auditors would charge us by the hour, you know, so you got to think as an auditor comes in and they're charging you by the hour and you only have half of your stuff done, in order for them to audit, they got to make up the other half, which they're charging you by the hour. So these audits, um, as we saw in town meeting day, um, I didn't have the number with us, but the last couple of years the audits were. So 2015, you spent 38500 2016, you spent 36227 and 2017, you spent 41000 so we. So I'm not sure if you had a single audit at that, any point. So that I, I don't no, know. those were all multi-year audits because um, they were they were scrambling to make up a three-year deficit over a four-year period. But I do see in one year in 2015 you had two different um, accounting firms. So whether so, one bill was lingering from a prior, I can't tell by. So we we have um, <clears throat> we have been averaging you know somewhere around thirty nine thousand dollars a year to do the auditing services in the town, based be, based be, uh, upon that the <coughs> the firms that we've dealt with um, have to charge us by the hour because we didn't have all our ducks in a row. Um, now that we do have a good administration in power and doing the jobs efficiently, the um, <clears throat> The um, auditing services are willing to do um, kind of a lump sum type agreement with us, uh, all inclusive type thing, and not charge us by the hour. Um, so the the current um, the current service agreement that we got in our packet <coughs> um, sets a, a schedule for the next three years, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Three years. So um, you know we've been spending thirty nine thousand. Granted, we've been playing catch up. We didn't have all our ducks in a row. Now that we have the administration in place, and we have, and we are caught up, mm -hmm. um, they feel um, confident to offer us the prices um, as follows: 2018 um, budget year would be uh, $21,100. Uh, 2019 would be $21,500, and 2020 would be 22,100. So we'll be making up two years worth of. So we'll be saving the town's um, taxpayers of the town um, considerable amount of money um, on this. So, um, so we, so that that is good, um, you know, and that's you know, Therese has a good working relationship, and um, you know, we're in a good spot here in the town now to off to get this type of service. So yeah, I mean, they send you a you know. So do we a page list of things that you need to do and and as long as you get it done and work with them and they did promise me that they would come back in early june and and um, but you know we we're in the process of finalizing our last year's audit um so uh we'll have some i'll be back 
Do we need to sign this for you? You or? do. Yep, I have the final page right here. So you okay. need to make the motion to accept the Sullivan Powers proposed scope of services, and then gives you three lines, which you guys can all figure out where to all sign right. in here. So I'll entertain a motion to accept Sullivan Powers um, scope of services for the next three years as follows: uh, 2018, twenty-one thousand one hundred dollars; 2019, at twenty-one thousand five hundred dollars; and the year. 2020 at $22,100. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ayes have it. Thank you, for Therese, for yes. working on that. One more piece of the puzzle. Yeah, yes, no, they were good. I well, that saves. Years, so. well, part I mean, of it is <laughs> working on it all year long, too, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, there's a whole. Having your numbers clear in the beginning helps get it uh, clear at the it, end. It does. It totally does. Well, right there, we, you know, on doing that and, and being more efficient with our administration, I mean, we're just on that auditing services alone um, will save the taxpayers about one cent. So, I mean, that's, that's how big that, that is. Hopefully we can keep adding one cent on top of one cent and <laughs> keep reducing things. Nice. <clears throat> uh, let's see. And next on the list is appoint the new lister. <clears throat> we had appointed uh, Kristen Judkins. Um, I don't remember when, but we had appointed her to, to do the lister functions. And um, unfortunately, due to other obligations, she's, um, she's had to withdraw. Just to be clear, I mean, this was an appropriate way to put it, I suppose. Um, but as I suspected, we did not get a letter of interest from her. Okay. And uh, we appointed her without a letter of interest, and she had not expressed that interest. So this is also not a letter of interest. Mm -hmm. We needed to get a letter of interest from Roberta Carrier through the, yeah, to uh, yeah. demonstrate that she thing. has interest in being a lister yeah. before we take action on it. Um, so I have to just say, maybe apparently you, you don't know that that uh, the other these ladies had been interviewed by the listers. I'm not sure. It must be no one told you that. No, so they said that. Yeah, she told us they'd been interviewed, but we did not receive a letter of interest, which is a, which is the basis, and we appointed based on the listers' recommendation. Right. And. Kristen had not submitted a letter of interest. She had been interviewed. She submitted a resume, but. She did not accept the position. She didn't want the position. And Roberta has started already. We need a letter of interest. I th we yeah, get I'm to just it's saying, I'm just telling you, she started because they went back to her after the first woman and said that she wanted it, and then she changed her mind, and, and um, one of your listers is injured and out of commission um, entirely. So they brought uh, Roberta, went back to her and asked her if she was still interested. She was, so she's been working the last couple of days um, with Louise to finish up inspections because you're at the end of your, um, at the end of that. That's good. So I, she's just I mean, I, I, think that's, I think that's reasonable. The, the problem is that w this mm -hmm. position and a, a couple others have been erroneously uh, appointed mm -hmm. and yeah. if we get an actual letter of interest from the person who we're appointing, then we know that we're appointing someone who wants to be in the position. Right, and so, I'm not sure that apparently, I don't, my impression may be that that wasn't made clear to the listers. I think once they went through the interview process and- No, I said right to, I said right to Louise. Oh, okay. We, yes, we haven't know. got a letter of interest and she said, well, she submitted a resume. Oh, okay, I didn't know, Carl, I wasn't sure. So, um, I, I don't particularly care how we move on this, it's just, uh, I think some people um, have a hard time following protocol sometimes, and maybe in most cases the protocol is, you know, not necessary. But then you run into a situation like this where we were all lax about it, and and, it, and I just want to say it, it, it's a misunderstanding. Kristen is a hardworking, intelligent oh, individual, absolutely. and. She did not back out of this job. She didn't actually say 
that she wanted it. Right. So she was erroneously um, appointed, and I, I don't want it to look as though she just didn't want to do the job. Oh, no, 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 it certainly wasn't I know, I'm not talking to you, I'm just talking yeah. in general. Yeah. That, um, and that saves people's face yeah. when we have oh, of actual. Course. You certainly have a meeting Monday. Uh, if the board so chose, you could table this issue until Monday. And I, I didn't could, realize that Roberta was working. So. And I could go to her tomorrow and ask for a letter of interest to be put in your packet. Mm -hmm. It certainly won't affect uh, payroll because um, they, you know, pay was this week. So I mean, I process today, so we it would fit in your time frame if you chose as a board. I just thought that Roberta was another name on the list. I didn't realize that she'd already started working. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't sure what I'd you'd like to get you know, the consensus of the board on what we'd like to do. I mean, I guess my two cents on the matter is, you know, I guess in, in some way uh, look at it the same way Carl does with, you know, it's kind of going back through town meeting day and we, you know, we elected somebody this year at town meeting day that wasn't there that didn't want the position. However, the person that was there didn't get elected. And, you know, so it just goes to that whole thing of, you know, we've been down that road of, of people that we, think want a position in the town and it comes to find out that they didn't want it. Um, and having something concrete, you know, a letter of interest, an email, uh, some sort of document that we can see that the person's actually committed to doing that position. I, I felt the same way. I thought this was kind of a <clears throat> too informal, um, kind of bypassing the process. And, and even the second part about the increase, I think was, I was just not comfortable not comfortable seeing it in this format, um, so I, um, I would like to table it. Uh, I... The second part of that is to be dealt with an executive yeah. session, so the first part was um, right. certainly, and Louise came to me with the memo, I didn't realize that you'd had this conversation, so I was kind of out of the loop. So. Um, I mean, I mean the good thing is that we have a meeting next Monday, so it's not like we get to go a full two weeks. Right. Uh, we do have it next Monday because of the holidays, the Monday after. So, you know, we're only talking one week. Um, that should be a pretty easy turnaround. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, I, I do see that, you know, the person is doing training. So I guess you could view that as a commitment um, if we wanted to look at it that way. Um, but. Um, well, I just think that for all of the other people in our town who have submitted letters of interest for consideration on mm -hmm. positions that. That, that should be something that we ask from Roberta. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, and I, I will say, though, that um, it's an interesting situation, and I guess we'll talk about it more in executive session, but um, we have, we are taking advantage of, um, and have been for many years, of semi-retired individuals performing the task of Lister, and, and there's a very substantial amount of, fine, of uh, numeric understanding There's a, is very skilled work, and I don't think that uh, minimum wage is adequate for that, and yeah. particularly when you look at the kinds of people that we could bring in who would provide uh, veracity to that position, mm -hmm. so. That's um, true. I think right. it, we, I don't feel like we need to be, I mean, unfortunately, costs go up, but we, you know, we see in our current administration the fact that when we have competitive individuals in the, in the work fit force, um, it costs money. I think you're right, I certainly, I think it's an undervalued document throughout the state of Vermont. The entire state is based on the grand list that a town generates, whether it's our tax rate, school tax rate, everything. And so I agree completely. It's a very true statement that it's, it really, um, it's one of the most important, the most important document that we generate. So does it sound like the consensus is to wait and and put this on the agenda for for our next meeting? Should be the twenty yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just need to make a motion to table it till the twenty first. Okay, I'll, uh, I make a motion that we table this request for appointment of Lister until our meeting for would be May twenty May twenty first. Okay. Yeah. Second. Oh, because today's the 14th, I was yeah. reading. All right, yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and we'll just make sure that, that the listeners understand the yeah, letter I'll of interest. Yeah, I'll take care of those now. And we'll save the other part for... I think Carl and Mo I wrote down. Okay. Okay. And we are on to the town manager's report. 
So Frank um, didn't do a town manager's report uh, this week, but I have two things to just let you know, because um, he's not here. So I gave Jose permission to use three or four parking spaces at the municipal parking lot for um, he's, for the Saturday during the mini block for electric vehicles. Um, he did say he wanted power, but we, we don't have the type of power that he needs here at the town hall. And I told him that via email today and said he'd have to go to some of the, the uh, businesses on Main Street to figure out who has the kind of, you know, amperage service that he needs. But those municipal parking around the mini block, I didn't think that was a stretch. So he was hoping to bring in uh, electric vehicles. So. Three parking spaces. <coughs> yeah. Cool. So I was like, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Middle of parking. The other thing is to let you know, um, it was a conversation I had with Mo the other day, test pits at the transfer station are going to be done on Wednesday of this week for Green Lantern, right? Green Lantern. Um, I had been a question about whether the, when the test pits were going to be done. A gentleman was in the other day that works for them and they're going to be doing the test pits on Wednesday. The um, Public Service Board did issue their Certificate of Public Good already. Um, apparently it's not... Um, based on these results because what the gentleman said to me was these results are really basically decide how much they need to spend on engineering what the what the soil is like so just so you know that's going to be happening on wednesday yeah. and, that's and we since our last meeting have hired a, another town employee I would assume that you had covered that already. And Hasn't then, been mentioned in public. No, no. No. Since our last meeting, we, we, enter, we interviewed and, and, a, and hired highway department. Yep, uh, A.J. Lewin from Royalton. He lives in Royalton now, apparently. Um, he had worked, has been his prior municipal experience, and um, he started today. Great. Excellent. Any other comments in regards to town manager report? We did have the uh, constable report information. I uh, did want to just point out I'm uh, very glad that he did catch the uh, 74 and a 50 speeder. <laughs> but, um, um, you know, and I, and I continue to have. Um, to receive uh, positive comments throughout the community with with um, just seeing him out and about. Um, he seems, to, when he's out, he's being productive and seems to be in the right locations. Um, you know, I think, again, we still need to talk about what we're gonna do in regards to, um, you know, we've talked about lowering the speed limit through the village out by the school area, um, but the, the racetrack is that school area. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, right where the state highway turns into town, you know, that's where he usually catches those ones doing 50, 60, 70 miles per hour in this case. Um, yeah, so, the stages have been camped out at the fire station and they're pulling people. Yep. yep. They've been pretty active as well. Um, I like, watched what got behind one the other day and followed him all the way through the village before he pulled him over, which I thought was courteous. And it just goes to show we've done a, we've done um, a lot in the town in the last two years, especially with speed enforcement, which was uh, uh, a big concern of the taxpayers. Um, and you know, there's there's only so far that the, that the um, you know speed signs and and things go without you know even having enforcement. Um, and we've dedicated more time for him to be out there and do speed enforcement. Um, but it just goes to show, even with speed signs and a constable that's actually active, there's still people, you know, I mean, when he's out there for five shifts and he gets five or six tickets a shift, that, you know, that's, that's a lot of speeding going on. Um, yeah. Is that something that you had talked about at previous meetings, is doing a... Um, is to reduce your speed limit? Yeah, we're, we're, look, we're still looking into a couple of different things. One is uh, uh, looking at some new different stylish uh, speed enforcement signs um, that, that Greg's working on. The other one we have been talking about is the potential of 
um, looking at the speed limit. Yep. Our bump um, outs are going to have, sent, they're going to do a, ton, a speed study with and without those coming up. Oh, there you go. I was going to yeah. say, obviously, that you're aware that you, you, obviously, you have to yeah. have a speed study done. A lot yep. of times your local planning commission will do it for you at, at no charge. And yep. We actually did one, and, and uh, believe it or not, if you don't have the right data, uh, you can't. We tried to lower our speed limit to 25. <coughs> we couldn't do it. Our data didn't support it. The statute mm -hmm. just gives you many uh, you know, abilities, but setting your own speed limit is ridiculous as that is. It didn't yeah. pan out for us. But so as long as you're doing that, then that's great. And I do know that Mark has access to a grant where he's thinking about getting another speed sign. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't move yeah. the one that was on... Where's the garage? Sand, Sand Hill. Hill. Sand From Hill. Sand Hill, but that one was relocated. And um, so we can see North some North positive Street. comments about yeah. that and then hopefully installing another one. Yeah, that one, one so. you can really see. It's a, when you're coming down through, that one really jumps right yeah. out at you. And, and I think, too, there was an issue where some people thought that the signs weren't working. But in order to conserve battery, what uh, Mark had changed this, the, um, Sensor. the, the sensors, thank you. So that if you're not speeding, it doesn't flash at you. So, but if you are, it does. So he was trying to get some extra life out of the battery. So mm -hmm. some people thought that they weren't working, but they yeah. probably just were minding the speed limit. So, and I think the ones um, Greg was working on were maybe a solar, solar powered. Mm -hmm. So the solar ones will bring you down to a yeah. They, they work great. And that's what he's well, you know, but, has some grant money, but it, it's going to be a little bit before that. I think grant comes up that he's going to be eligible to for government highway safety. But, so they are certainly working on it. But you set up tolls. There you go. Yeah. That's right. Raise the money. Yeah. So we're so he's doing a good job out there. Um, did we have any um, questions in regards to the budget? I gave you the uh, currently we. I try to put some notes on it. Sometimes I'll repeat them if I think it bears reading that. But. Otherwise, um, there's certainly notes on there along with uh, collections. So one of the processes for those that haven't been here anyways is one of, the, one of the processes that we had put in place this year was to get a monthly update of our budget and where we're at. Um, so all the board members get a printout of where we stand um, so that we can kind of compare it with uh, budget versus actuals. Um, so every other meeting we usually talk about this. Currently, we are 83% of the way through our budget, uh, kind of on the home stretch here. So, so Therese, um, back to the to the audit. Um, what is? Do you have an idea of what uh, when we'll be expecting this audit to be completed? Yep, it's actually he's just putting the finishing touches on it. I got an email today. This from, is but this that, is from the June ending June 30, 2017. Right, so then we're going to be ending this fiscal year at the end of next month. Mm -hmm. And then how long do we wait? Are we going to be able to have that audit prior to town meeting? I doubt yeah. it. No? I, don't think I, so. I wouldn't think so. Just because um, he'll come in June to do a little preliminary work before the year end, which is very helpful. And that it depends what their schedule is, uh, frankly, in the past. I think. I've never had one at, at, out by town meeting because even if I've got them there in September, October, um, you know, just a lot of work and they're really busy. So I, I wouldn't assume that you would see it at town meeting. No. Okay. But so I will know I'll have you know a better handle some, on the numbers. I mean, right. we'll know the numbers are better. Certainly there, there's sooner. always, I think, some expectation from the public that we had audit so that we have veracity in our numbers when we're presenting them at town meeting. And that's... Is that not a legitimate expectation statewide? I would say no. Not not if you're especially not like us if you're on a, <coughs> a modified accrual basis. No, if you're cash, sure, but no, yeah. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll But we'll be more timely and we will be more timely and we'll have a better handle on the numbers by um, implementing some procedures and balancing our own accounts and you know, you'll see the write up obviously, you know, I knew it was gonna be big and, and there were, you know, none of the cash account balances were right and things like that. So there was a lot of work to be done for them this time. So I think that that'll be better. And them coming in June is always great because you can kind of work on some things that need to be, um, you know, hammered out before the end of the year. And those are all processes I'm working on now is trying to, is making sure that all the cash accounts are right, that there's any issues I, you know, can call them and sort it out. So, um, 
But yeah, I, I do think it's a little bit of an unrealistic expectation. I think you'll see it sooner than you did this time. But however, they were asking me a lot of questions and I was like, ah, you know, <laughs> saying you were here last. So trying to work it out with them. But I do think you'll see it in more timely manner. But no, I don't. you'll right. never see it by town meeting, I don't believe. All right. Well, that's good. It clears it up for me. I just Sorry. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was poking through the budget and had a few observations and concerns, but um, on the revenue end of things, um, the, what we classify the local revenues mm -hmm. are down quite a bit for the year. Do we, and I know those, you know, like things like recreation area fees, you know. Those will be coming in. Those come in, you know, right at the, in June. So, right. you know, we'll get slammed with those, exactly. but they're. But and I'm not I, sure how often, to how often Pam pays your town clerk fees. Yeah. Uh, so I was gonna, I'll have to ask Pam about that. So obviously, the, I guess the biggest one is the town clerk fee. Um, and then, you know, my guess is probably the revenue at the town hall won't be, won't hit the budget. Um, I would, I at this yeah, rate. I say, no, no, I don't think However, so. However, the town hall costs have been under budget, so yeah. hopefully those will, um, Right, and, and I guess out. I don't know how often um, the town clerk pays the clerk fees, but I'll, I'll ask Pam, so I don't know how often. Do we Let's hear this a little see. bit different than I'm used to? A few things I just wanted to point out is, you know, um, you know, the importance of at some point getting a new town garage. Um, you know, we continue to put more and more money into the town garage than we need to or should have to. Um, so it just goes to show that we do need a facility. Um, you know, we're, we're already, you know, 184% over the budget for the town garage um, for the year on maintenance and on that. Um, which, you know, with a newer facility, we wouldn't have to spend that nearly that kind of money. Um, you know, which is basically we had budgeted $8,500 to date. We're at um, just over 15000 and some of that comes from, I think, um, just pumping out the, your water separator mm -hmm. too there. I think that was new last year, and I think nobody, you know, you didn't yeah. know how much to budget to have that, to do that. So we've certainly, um, that's higher than anticipated, and we did get um, downloaded the rules from the DEC on that and how they can, what they can and cannot do in, in regards to that. So hopefully um, we'll see that slow down and be managed a little bit differently. And I would assume that we pretty much have purchased most of the materials that we need for this this year. I know yeah, we were. I'm not sure, Chris. I, I, I'm not sure if he's still going to be. Because um, it would be nice to. Gravel would be the only thing. For yeah. yeah, yeah and just right. maybe at this point, just try to hold off on purchasing any materials that we don't, you know. Yeah, I think that he's still going to be home. Have to have. Gravel, and I don't know how much chloride he has, yeah. so. You know, I, I guess I'm not going to make that assumption that he's done. I don't know. I'll just talk to him. I mean, we probably ought to, anything that we can hold off until July right. would probably be the way to do it right now. I mean, we're we're tracking on target right now. Well, we're ahead of target right now. Of course, the way materials go, your materials are usually um, front loaded. So yeah, so I don't know what uh, <clears throat> what else plan is that be conversation. Yeah. But we did. Um, it was a tough winter. So as you can see, the um, the materials, the materials used for the roads, you know, we were over budget on salt and uh, sand we were right on, but we were over on salt and I'm sure the state was over on their budget for winter maintenance as well. So they, uh, we're in the same boat. So anything we can do to save face there. And I saw... Do we know whether the... Obviously, we used more salt, but was there a, a price differential that it caused part of that? Or? I think that this town, <laughs> I would assume you buy the state, maybe Brian would know that you buy the same price. The state usually negotiates with <coughs> salt and you usually buy from their vendor. So, and so basically, we're using or used more than we. Yes. Made. Well, it would a lot, depend a lot on the tonnage because the price could vary from. From the start of the season to the end. Well, that's what I was getting at. I didn't know whether or not we were, whether it was a matter of um, needing more or using more than we needed to use or paying more than we had budgeted yeah. for the cost. I mean, there's probably several ways in which we 
Exactly. In her, in her, I mean, I couldn't <coughs> tell you whether or not you've used more than you <coughs> should have used. That's certainly beyond my purview. But I no, I was asking you yeah, about what you're what you're saying. about cost. Yeah, I mean, certainly but, they were at the state bid price, so they would have had a price on it for whatever they were going to get. I'm sure, you know, like Ryan. But, but. Um, I mean, the, from my observations, it seemed like it's probably a mixed bag of. Um, we definitely did have some weather that, you know, it wasn't the snow, but it was the, the rain and ice. Um, but I think some of it too was some of the learning curve with with our, our new road foreman on, you know, there's, there's a big difference from Colorado to here, you know. Um, so I think there's, there's a little bit of a learning curve there as well, but um, definitely something to look at. I mean, I know everybody's budgets were over on the winter maintenance this year. Yeah, it's a chronic issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then just kind of under the government operations I th is where I had noted a lot. Um, just mainly wanted to bring it up to the public eye on how much certain things cost us. Um, so to, you, you can't really budget tax abatements but um, to date, we've done uh, fifty-six hundred dollars worth of tax abatements, um, and then you know the big things that we have talked about at town meeting, as well as at some of our meetings, is um, you know legal. We had increased our legal budget from fifteen thousand to twenty-five thousand for this coming year. Um, to date, um, we've used twenty-two thousand five hundred um, in this budget season. So had we had budgeted for 25, I guess we'd be pretty close. We were right there. Um, but instead, we're over 7,000 there. And then the auditing services, like we just took care of you know, last, last year, uh, which is this year, um, you know, we spent $37,400 on auditing services that we, put, that we only budgeted 25,000 for. So um, the good thing is, is you know, now that we have auditing services for the next three years that are under $22,000. So um, we, we have a better handle on that as but well. Somebody's managing the budget fairly well because we're only at 90 overall for that government. Well, some of it, the capital improvement reserve, the last little chunk gets put yep. in that. After yep, his taxes are due tomorrow. Um, so. And then the other thing is the cumulative debt yeah. changed because um, we're paying an interest payment, not a debt payment this year. Yeah, you mm -hmm. just don't take the, you just leave it. The there. only, I did ha shoot you the, hopefully you got it. I had a question in regards to what other meant. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that either. Okay, well I don't want to put you on the spot, but there's there's a line item under yeah. government operations that's other. Yeah, and it's, I don't know. And it's, I didn't know, <laughs> I, I, it's 500 and right now it's at $9,200, so I didn't know what that meant. Um, if that was the catch-all for other stuff, or um, I don't know. I'd have to look maybe if you could now. just shoot. Yeah, I'm not Looks like somebody's been coding for other. <laughs> well, generally, well, it's because you, you know, generally a reason that maybe you just didn't have something mm -hmm. somewhere else to put. And it very well, I mean, there's other items that haven't been filled. Maybe it got coded wrong, I don't know, but that had stuck out. Right, yeah, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what's in there, but I can look. Did want to bring up that our, on the utility end of things, we um, were down to $131,420 worth of um, delinquencies. Um, that's that's down from um, 144,000 a month ago. So we've collected 22. Uh, we've collected 12,600 dollars with the delinquencies over the last month. Does that sound right, Therese? Yep. So we're we're working in, in a forward progression here to yeah. to get accounts caught up. Um, it does look like here that all accounts are accountable or accounting for yep. um, <coughs> so at this point either they're um, either they've made made a deal with the town or or we have a handle on where they're at so mm -hmm. that's good yep. been good been and on the tax end of things we are uh, um, so we're down um, so we're at two. We're at uh, at that time we we're at two eighty seven. Those uh, the 
remember, 2018 isn't considered technically. Yeah, I know. That's like why it's until tomorrow. Right. Um, so prior to that, I collected another 7.5% on the 2012 to 2017, and I collected 12.8% more on the 2018. So we've so, collected about thirty thousand five hundred dollars yeah, worth. Yeah, since So this was, uh, yeah. So this, um, mm. so we certainly had, yeah, collected another thirty grand in about thirty days. So, and people are coming in and making payments, yeah. and it's and it's working, and, and um, just reaching out and talking to people I have discovered that um, even though I don't have them, some people had prior agreements um, mm. that I wasn't aware of. So certainly. Um, and being made aware of that now and then trying to change them to something that will actually work out. Now, how are we doing with those accounts versus, like, with the utility accounts, they're all accounted for at this point? Right. Oh, on the tax end of things? I'm still looking for a couple of people. Okay. So, we're getting there. Yeah. We're, okay. Yeah. And eventually, I mean, in the end, you certainly get the attention of notices and things like that mm -hmm. for tax sale, but I'm certainly trying to reach out. Sometimes right. you know somebody who knows somebody. Carl knows it, and uh, sometimes that's how you, you kind of figure it out. And we have some feelers out and, and have located more people. So I think I had a list of maybe seven, and we've already cut that down. Certainly Kelly knows everybody. She doesn't know you, she knows someone who knows you, and it's very helpful when you're looking for people. So I think that we'll have a good handle on how we'll proceed for tax sale, you know, by the end of July, the beginning of August, to figure out what we're going to do there. Good, cool. And like we had talked about before, I think the probably the best thing is to make sure that we separate out the collection from the budget. Mm -hmm. So any of this extra collection at the end of the year, that you know, whatever that number might be, that we have left, you know, because we will come. Come, come out in a surplus because of the extra collections. Mm -hmm. But just making sure that we separate those collections out on their own so that we can take that pool of money and bring that back to the taxpayers on what do we want to do with this allotted amount of money that we have collected? Yeah. Do we want to pay down? Do we want to pay down, well, pay down the debt? Do we want to, you know, give money back to the taxpayers? You know, but yeah. that's a voted in type. Well. It, it's going to come back to what, whether or not you have an undesignated fund balance or a surplus. I right. can tell you that I'm looking at that the audit that's, that's not been finalized was not what I had hoped. You're down another, you're, you are already in a deficit and, and you, you're down another 90000 last mm -hmm. year. So that deficit uh, grew, which was certainly not what my hope had been. And, um, but with increased collections this year, we'll, you know, we'll hopefully make that up. And, Mm -hmm. Obviously, and um, because we're, bud we're collecting money that was that we hadn't budgeted for, so we'll see what you have for an undesignated fund balance. There's certainly a rule of thumb out there that'll get you that before you rush to give back to the taxpayers, there is usually a percentage that they suggest that you keep mm -hmm. as an undesignated fund balance so that you don't continue to fall back into a deficit. Right. Obviously, we've made a lot of assumptions in trying to to fix some things in your budget that was approved on town meeting and. And, um, but you know it's difficult. Everybody's um, crystal ball is a little foggy when you're voting out 18 months. But yeah, the audit was not what I had hoped for. I knew that there would be write-ups and you know all that. That's all mm -hmm. fine. But the fact that it had come down to another 90 was not what I was looking for. But the the deficit that we had that we were going to be wrapping into long-term debt is concise and then beyond that number we have a ninety thousand dollar deficit from la in this last right so any surplus collected from delinquent fees would go directly to that because that's live in our right. budget it'll go to offset that and then the, the long-term funding is really just to clean up that whole FEMA, mm -hmm. right. you know, note. However, once month. once July 1 starts, mm -hmm. you know, that pool of money that we collect from July 1 to June 30th of next year, we'll want to make sure that Because I guess the way I envision it is, you know, we're going to start fresh with a budget on July 1. Right. So, you know, uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't work out this way, but let's say over the course of the next year, you know, we run a $40,000 deficit in the town, right. let's say. 
we, we need to identify that deficit on its own line item. Right. Exactly. But at the same time, let's say we take in $40,000 in extra um, yeah. delinquencies. delinquencies. Instead of wish washing it, we should identify each one of them as a deficit. Because and then that one applies well, to free designated budget. fund balance, and then and then be able to figure out what we want to do so, that money. Well, you will know because you budgeted you budgeted a revenue for some collection of outstanding mm -hmm. property taxes, so that will be there. And so you'll right. you certainly it won't be called out separately because you'll see it on your on your statement just now. You'll see it as delinquent taxes collected, and then you'll see. Um, yeah, but I think what Chris is talking about is a transparency issue, right? Right. But right. well, what I'm saying is we 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 do have it in there, and and you know so I don't know whatever it is. So say we said we're going to collect fifty thousand dollars with the back taxes and mm -hmm. and whatnot, and if we end up doing seventy instead of fifty, we want to make sure that we identify that. Oh yeah, it'll be right there. We don't want to just use the twenty to offset. No, no, our, no, no, you know, I, but I'm saying that right there. that be, stuff is happening. Yeah, it'll in be the past. Yeah. taxes. You'll see those right. collected. So, yeah. so your comment about the undesignated fund, at a, at a certain point in time, mm -hmm. if a town is generating a surplus based on its budget over expenditures, mm -hmm. one of the things that the town can do is create an undesignated fund. You basically leave Or do you automatically create one as soon as you start bringing in that surplus? Right. Exactly. Right. You're, you automatically create one. It's not a separate fund. It's just your surplus. But at a certain point in time, that number does have to go before the, the voters. In other words, to say, we have a $20,000 slush fund. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, so what you do is you keep a percentage of your money. You make a recommendation of a percentage that you keep. And mm -hmm. you just leave it there. And then anything over that you can do. I've seen where towns say, okay, we're going to offset taxes by $10,000. Or sometimes if you have a larger surplus, you can say, okay, we're going to vote at town meeting to offset taxes by 10000 We're going to transfer 10000 of the undesignated fund balance to capital building or whatever. So, yeah, yeah certainly. But right. especially for Bethel, I think it's... it's we got a few years before it's 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 <laughs> it. Well, at some point, we won't be budgeting in collecting back taxes. Either. Not, right. I yeah, definitely would that recommend it, right, but in your it. case, you know, you had a lot. So, but You're probably only another year or two away from yeah, I think cutting the cord on that. Mm -hmm. it, but. Yeah. <coughs> All right. Um, other business? Oh, actually, we missed uh, meeting. So did, did Committee we, meetings. Everybody look through the. Oh, I'm off again. Here we go. Let's get yeah. back on the right one here. Our um, select board minutes from the 23rd. Um, I'm just curious whether or not the, whether or not you know whether the office received the map from the ATV club. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. curious because we had said they were going to try to follow up on that. I can ask Kelly tomorrow. Yep. Otherwise, I don't see any issues with that. So our um, select board meeting minutes from the 23rd. I looked them over. I thought everything looked good. I mean, just make a motion we accept the minutes of the 23rd as written. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Ayes have it. And we have our committee meeting minutes. There was one in there from the Solid Waste Board. Anything, uh, Mo, that you want to touch on, or this is this is from two meetings. We uh, just yeah. had a meeting Wednesday for May, so then minutes should be in our next process. Okay. So what's the the you've got two items: the interlocal amendment, and then the solar contract. So where are we at with those? You have to ask Greg on that because the, the solar. I is, think last I heard, we it was up to us to review them now. Right. They had already been reviewed uh, by, by the Royal Board. Yeah. The uh, the Green Lantern is uh, Royalton didn't vote on that at their last meeting, and it's, 
know, I think lawyers are looking at it right now. Yeah, what he said when I went, that Sam, <coughs> the gentleman there, yep. when he called, he said that they had, as I think you, you used Paul, right? Giuliani? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that he said that they had talked to the lawyers and addressed all the lawyers' concerns. But that was Sam from Green Lantern. Um, right. I gave him a message, or I uh, told him to call Greg <laughs> on Thursday. They could yeah. talk I, about I, it. But I'll make a note to see if it goes on the yeah. agenda for next week. I believe there's still some questions that weren't answered to what Giuliani really wanted. So. For, the, for the amended interlocal or for the solar? For the Green Lantern. For the Green Lantern. Yeah. And it looks like as far as the interlocal agreement went with the board from World 10, that they had voted voted for the amendment um, and with the suggestion to send it to the, the amendment to the Attorney General's. Right. Which we, we haven't on our end yet. Right, we haven't. So that's where that stands. So after we, we did say that we were wanted the attorney general to look at it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like the from the meeting minutes, Royalton board um, wanted some clarification whether uh, possession on page two would exclude real estate property. So I'd have to look to see mm -hmm. what that was. But I believe it would because because the facility is just a tenant. Property. And the other one that um, Conservation yeah. Committee had there in the minutes. Do we need to move to accept the amended April 9th select board minutes? No, we, no, we have both. So we can just go ahead and sign those. I think, yeah. the, I think that's what Kelly said. They just got missed. Somebody just forgot. No, we, well, we, we approved them to be edited. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just got to sign them. Yep, yeah. they're already approved. Just got to sign them. Yeah. And we are at any other business to come before the board or other communications? Yeah, I have an issue something. that was brought to my attention. We have, uh, as everybody knows, after Irene, the town became the recipients of four buyout properties that have been renaturalized and turned into parks for the town. And one of them, and, and in several of them, we've had tree plantings. Um, but the one in Gilead actually is, uh, oh, and public vehicular traffic has been precluded from all of these um, sites, so they're open for pedestrian use. Um, and the Gilead Park had uh, structures built to preclude any vehicles from driving through the primary access, but people have found a way to drive um, along the stream of the Gilead Brook uh, in some outwash gravel that remnant from Irene and had developed a fire pit and, and uh, party site on an adjacent piece of property. It, doesn't, it is not the buyout property, but there's no clear boundary mark, and now they have figured out how they can drive their ATVs onto the Gilead Park, including driving over some of the whatever partnership planted, the trees that we planted to stabilize the site. Um, it's not not substantial damage, but it requires some signage. The, the town will need to put. So, some do you want signage, or do you want to receive repairs? Like, what are you? You know, I mean, what do you think will really keep them out? What kind of signage? It's you pretty. For? It's it's not well marked. It's not like a road. It's okay. it's not well marked, and I think it's pretty minimal at this point. I think if people had a sign that said. Um, you know, you can see where there's sort of a natural access. It looks like you could drive your ATV right up onto yep. the plateau where the, where the green space is. And I think it's, it's the only place you could drive your ATV up there. Okay. And I think a sign right there that just said Town of Bethel, Gilead Park, 
pedestrian traffic only. Yeah, no, okay. no unauthorized but motorized vehicles or something. No motorized vehicles, yeah. But our part of our conservation easement with those properties was to uh, protect against any kind of um, mm -hmm. impact. So, on. how many signs do you think I should have them order? Well, I, I would be interested to see where we are with signage for all of the buyout properties because I don't think that we've actually completed the. We're, we had kiosks on a couple of them, right? And I don't think that those signs have been completed. There's nothing on the kiosks. There's nothing on the kiosks. The kiosks right. are up, no. but they're empty. Right. So I believe that there's supposed to be some information in those kiosks that describe the purpose for the park and the way that it is intended to be used. Mm -hmm. And there is no kiosk at the Gilead no. Park, and I don't know whether it was ever designed, but but um, some signage that would be in line with the signage on the other buyout properties would be in, in appropriate. And we have, the town should have comprehensive plans, and if you can't find them, I have them. I, I, can, just, I can send you them to you. <laughs> so what I was going to ask, is it something that the town did or, or yeah. does, or is that the Conservation no. Commission? No, no, the, the, okay. the Conservation Commission is our um, representative in uh, executing the conservation easement yeah, through the right. conservation no. fund, but the, the town of Bethel, when we took it over, had funds granted for the uh, renaturalization project, and we, through Dubois and King, got comprehensive okay. study and a and an engineering plan for the which we bid out and had the construction done on all these properties and part of that plan was to put up information in kiosks to describe the way that the properties would be used and okay. and the Gilead might need to be um, modified to include an additional sign on the back side that and it doesn't have to be, I mean, I hate to see it be some obtrusive yeah. sign. Yeah, and like, know, you know, know. Because clearly when you get back there, it's a nice, it's a, you know, it's a basically a, a high gravel berm that's just the remnants of the washout from Irene. And, it, okay. and you're on the backside of a piece of property by the brook. And so right. somebody I just needs to know that they can't drive there. Yeah. Yeah, the unfortunate part of it is, is that it's a... 500 feet of private property that doesn't belong to the town of Bethel, which is where that access starts. So by the time they've made it in, mm -hmm. they're not on town property. And so right. then the next thing for them to do is to go on town property. Right. And there's no clear line. Okay. So, I'll um, ask um, Kelly tomorrow if she knows where it is. Or maybe, yeah, tomorrow, Wednesday after the um, taxes. And I'll ask her about it. And then if she can't find it, I'll, either her I'll email you. To, yeah. And um, I'll certainly let Greg know that that he needs yep. to go out and walk these parks and see yep. if the signage is happening. Yeah, there should be stands. some somewhere in that those designs. There was comprehensive list of what those kiosks were. Right. Right. So the I can just suggest allocated. that money is allocated. Yeah. Money is allocated. Right. I can suggest mm -hmm. that he walk the parks and inventory the signs yeah. and yeah. see where he stands. Yep. I'm not sure whether the kiosk was was in that allocation for up there or not. I don't think there was one in Gilead, but. But I know that the kiosks themselves were part of our contract with right. contractors, exactly. and they put them up, but nobody ever put any signs in them. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Well, something sure. funny. Well, no, but I mean. But it's par for the course. That was all part of transition from one. All right. I'll just mention it to Brad. I've never heard anything about this topic in <laughs> a few months, so doesn't mean it's not all explained there. I'll, I'll find out. I'll, I'll ask Kelly. She I can, I can email them to you right now. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, I'll let her know. You don't want to just... Ordering signs yeah. for kiosks. There is one at Peabody Park at the yeah. road access, yeah. which also has never had anything put in it. Yeah. So yeah. if there's like a discount for multiple signs, maybe yeah. a conservation commission could come up with some dollars to put a map or the sign about snotweed or whatever yeah. it's called and, you know that kind of stuff yeah. oh, somebody recently put up there's a newer sign up about cleaning off in the kiosk uh yeah by the boat launch right is that where the one yeah the one down by the so, water yeah transport. yeah it's like off to the, oh, to the right hand okay. side it's new i noticed it like a week or two ago oh, okay, so and it hadn't been there a couple weeks before right. so okay. Okay. Oh. 
Right. So there is there is at least sort of the informational about cleaning off your boats and okay. uh, oh, great. Like that, That's but no, that nothing else good. that no maps or anything. Okay. So, so it might be kind of interesting if we are if if there is no already prescribed signage for those kiosks, then maybe it would be uh, appropriate to list all of the um, in those kiosks all of the the other town parks or oh. river accesses so yeah. people would know. I mean, if we're looking for things to fill the space, yeah. <laughs> other than just rules of, op of operation. There's but. probably some great, I mean, I know like the Vermont Invasives uh, just put out a, a really well done two-pager about the um, Asian longhorn beetle. I mean, it's just a very well done thing for the fact that it's new, you know, new within our state. The state of Maine has had it for you know, over a decade, and they don't have anything as comprehensive as what Vermont just put out. And so things like that, there's free information from state agencies that we could definitely grab and put into those kiosks. Cool. Would that be something that we could task the conservation committee with? with well, uh, I think that to some degree, looking it, at, you know, I think it's probably makes sense to engage them with it, but uh, uh, I wouldn't want to exclude them from it. I think, though, it, part of it, I think it's management that. So I was just wondering, maybe using them as the tool to, to develop, you know, the literature or, or what we would like to put in there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Greg should inventory and see what's around, yeah. see what's there. I, they even, I think we need to yeah. refer Plan to. The, I think we need to refer to the to the engineering um, first to see because I'm pretty sure there was. Or maybe it isn't that, maybe it's the FEMA agreement, but there is some basic uh, public information regarding the buyout property and the way it is to be used that I think was supposed to be posted mm -hmm. as well. And then those other things would be important, right? clearly. Okay. And I think the Conservation mm -hmm. Commission is clearly would be appropriate organization to... Sounds good. Anything else? To... Yeah, Chris, a few minutes ago, we talked about the Planning Commission and whether or not they were on online for creating uh, the uh, research or whatever that they needed to. And you, you had mentioned you were going to try yep. to attend I, one of their meetings. I actually missed their meeting that night, uh, but I will attend their one that they have, um, I believe it's this Wednesday. Okay. So we'll get, yeah. um, sounds like talking with them that they're, they're, um, they're spending a, a portion <coughs> of the time right now on, on the, um, survey. the survey that they're, they're finishing out, so. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll get any other information that they that they have to share with that. Anything else? Entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second.